welcome to Four Player Podcast, episode 480. It's November f- 17th. 17th, 2016. My name is Nick Henderson. Uh, I am joined to my immediate right, I guess, by Corvo, Corvos, Carlos. The Hi. What are we calling you? Cor- Hope still some. It's Carlos wearing a Corvo mask. Corvos Otano. Cor- <laughs> Corvos Otano. Corvo sock. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Brad Simons. Yes, that's me. Uh, Nolan Hedstrom. How's it going, everybody? And Christopher Guthridge. Hello. We've got a packed room this evening, but we've all been playing Dishonored 2, so uh, we would all like to uh, to talk about that. So we're going to talk a lot about Dishonored 2 in a bit, but first, let's... Is anybody, has anybody been doing anything fun? Have you been watching anything anything cool you want to you bring up now? Anything? <laughs> Before we jump straight into the video games, the show Atlanta and the movie Arrival are both pretty good. All right, it's wonderful. Pretty good. It's pretty good. No, they're both Carlos, pretty great. Pretty it's great. Carlos's elbow is like right, right. <laughs> like right in my face. Apparently, apparently, I, I was gonna say I elbowed Bernard, but apparently Bernadette faced me in the elbow the other night. Oh, like your elbow's out there. My and elbow was out. She I walked. Her I was no, I was sleeping. Mm-hmm. And I guess I had like my arm like this, and she like moved in and like she hit her face on my elbow. <laughs> Brad, domestic abuse is not funny. I know it. Yeah, but that joke is still pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it's it's okay to laugh because you didn't actually hit her. The police, the police weren't actually called. Okay. Right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, no, I wanna, they weren't. I, before we get into discussions, you know, we have we have a lot of Dishonored Two talk today. We've all been playing. I think we've all been playing that, right? Everyone in this uh, cabin. I've, I just beat it right now before coming here. Carlos just finished it. I've played it the least. Okay, but well, point is, we've all played quite a bit of, or at least a significant chunk of Dishonored 2. Uh, we'll talk about Tyranny, Robinson, The Journey, as well. I played a little VR this week. Whoa! Whoa. Calm down, Nick. At home, With a by myself. In in a house. VR porn? No, we didn't. Not yet. That, that'll come later. Don't worry. Um, but <laughs> before we do that, I have a couple of comments. Or How sorry, we didn't mention my game uh, because it's probably Persona not on that Four. Banner. No, Persona Three. Wait, what? What have you been playing? Persona Three. Look, God, it is. It's it. in the banner up there and more. Yeah, and more. <laughs> See, it says it up there. What am I, the fucking that, Professor and Marianne over here? That yeah. covers all of our bases. Um, but before we get into all that, I have a couple uh, bits of feedback from last week's episode. Uh, reminder, if there's anything that we talk about on the show tonight that uh, you want to chime in or leave your thoughts on, you can find the post on the site at fourplayernetwork.com for this episode, and you can leave a comment down below, and we'll read them and address them at the start of next week's episode. I uh, just got a couple this week uh, from Ichi's Kid. Ichi's Kid? Ichi. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I'm moving pet. That was... This particular comment was addressed to relate me. It has nothing to do with the show. Disregard. Haas3000 is our first comment. Mm. He says, I can't believe any one of you ding-dongs... Uh, only one of you ding dongs d- knew who Mike Hagar was. Shame. Who's Mike He's Hagar? He's the mayor of uh, <laughs> fucking Pound Town. Yeah, that, that <laughs> one game. He's the Carlos, mayor. Can't Fighter, hear you that something mask. fight, right? It was a fighting game. Fight He's, game. He's the mayor of like Streets of Rage or something. Fights of Rage. No, it's not that. Fights Geese Howard. It's it's fi- Fidel Frame. Fidel Final Fight. Fatal Final Fight. Final fight. <laughs> I'm so confused. This Final has not clarified anything for me see. at all. All right, I, and it's Hagar, not Hagar. Hagar ha- is a Viking. Hagar, Hagar like the pants. Fuck. I don't, I, Hagar like the. I'm the no pants closer to action. having an answer to that question. Yeah, so uh, let me tell you something about that. Not everyone can know everything. We're so sorry. Except for no one. No, I don't know everything. You never fucking read that XKCD comic. Also, no, I can't. No, read everything. I don't know what you're the talking. about. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> it's all about how nobody can fucking know everything. And anytime someone's like, "Oh, I didn't know that," and people freak like, "How do you not know that?" You shouldn't react like that. Your you gaps. should be like, "I'm glad I get to be the one to let you to know about this." To enlighten you. I've we, never even heard of that comic. We, we there all, you go. We all have. Gaps. No, you're supposed to get mad at me. I have. I have some feedback from Piosht. Wow. Piosht. Forty-six months. Holy shit. Uh, Piosht says, in regards to Crispy's Piosht. question, in regards to Crispy's question, I've never asked a question in my life. Yes, you have. You asked a question last week, s- supposedly. <laughs> Piosht says, in regards to Crispy's question about Mass Effect 3's ending, 
Oh. They didn't yeah, did backtrack on what happens, but they did expand on the aftermath in the extended cut edition of the game. Mm. Uh, I really hope Mass Effect Andromeda is good. Maybe I just need to replay it, but the more I think about Dragon Age Inquisition, the less I like it. <laughs> yep. Should you. I play that game? Dragon Age Inquisition? Yes. Yes, so that you can be just as disappointed as we are. It's, yeah. not, it's not a bad game. And so, yeah, it's, it's not, not it's not a bad, a bad game. game. That's not very it's, convincing, It's when though. you're comparing it to the two previous games in the series, and when you're comparing it to other RPGs that came out around the same time, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's... I think... What's up? No, 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 please, go ahead. No, I was going to say, because one of our big <laughs> issues with that game was that, like, quests half the time were given through notes. Yeah. Like, you would just find a note on the ground, and that would start a quest, and then you would finish the quest, and it'd be over. And at the same time, like, or not same time, but right after is when Witcher 3 came out. Yeah. In which every fucking quest was an NPC that you talked to, that you had, like, almost developed a small relationship with. Yes. And not at, only, like, not only that, but the quests in Dragon Age were... Lots of fetch quests. Absolutely inconsequential. It yeah. was all, oh, yeah. like, go kill five of these, go collect ten of these. Yeah. yeah. See, was, I, played, I played just enough in Inquisition to get to... What was the the uh, the first big area? The meadow. Oh, the fucking it, it, the, the place that everyone got didn't realize they could just leave. Yeah, yeah. and hours. I spent the like hinterlands. The hinterlands. The hinterlands. Yeah, Thank you. you I spent like ten hours in the hinterlands, and I was like, I don't know if, what I'm doing. What I'm <laughs> yeah. doing, which is a shame is... because there's a lot of other areas no, that are is. big and beautiful. But yeah. yeah, the I think I think that game is very solid through. 90% of the experience, and then, like, the last two hours really just take the wind It's out such of a sales. weird... Like, if you look at the arch of Dragon Age as a series, it's such a weird... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it, they're all completely different. Like, they're all... Like, one, two, and three, dramatically different. No? No, no, they, they are, but, yeah. like, I feel like... It's not so odd what happened. It's not so weird what happened. Well, no, because I don't think Bioware got them. bought by EA, and there was a Dragon Age Origins was like, "Hey, remember Baldur's Gate? We're gonna do that for today, and we're not gonna be, you know, beholden to, yeah, you know, D and D or whatever." Boom. And then the second one came out. And it's like, well, EA really wants us to make this next one really quick, and it's got to be cooler and more badass, and and we have no time and. And more extreme, and then Inquisition is just the same thing. It's it, it just wait, but Inquisition isn't. I don't wouldn't say that's more of the same thing from two. I think three no, is they, dramatically they, they different. They definitely from one expanded. And two. No, but 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 they they tried to make it more actiony Correct. with each entry. Yeah, but, and but yeah. The, the end result is you have three games in the same series that are all dramatically different. Like they almost feel yeah. Like if they weren't telling, if there wasn't like a cohesive like connection between like the lore in those games, you would. <laughs> You wouldn't even know they were part of the same series. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. I still really liked two. Is three? Do people is the consensus that three is better than two? It, it, the, the consensus so, yeah. is that it's different in that it's less linear. You're not just in that one fucking yeah. town the whole time. You're actually exploring lands and stuff like that. But the gameplay just isn't the best. I yeah. mean, what they what's consistent in all of the games is the interaction between characters and the story and the stuff yeah. that you're doing outside of the main quest. But the story in two was so good. It's, it's worth playing, but why would you choose? I mean, there's a ton of things. I have. Like I have Inquisition. About, it's sitting on my shelf. It's like we were talking about bio game, Bioware games earlier. There are hints and flashes of really cool ideas that never really go anywhere. Never come to well, I'll tell you or, this much. The companions are still all really cool and yes. they're cool to yeah. talk to and it's That's cool the to do their quests. The best stuff is doing like companion quests. Yeah. Yeah. I was really excited about the whole like like uh, like you being the lord of the of the inquisition and like you like you'd You're go do missions and then people? you'd have to like yeah, you'd have to like they they you capture prisoners and then you had to like judge them and like That was pretty cool. But that shit never like Yeah. Amounted to anything. You never in the game. went anywhere. You never. Yeah. And there was no consequences for you doing something. It's not like you sentenced someone to something and later on they yeah. show up and they're like, "Ah, fuck you! You ruined my life. I'm gonna kill yeah. you." Like that. Nothing really ever came out of that. Yeah, it's just it's kind of a shame. I've read filler. like five Dragon Age books and they're some pretty good ones. Maybe is it worth? Is it more worthwhile to read the books and play yeah, the games? Maybe, at this maybe point? just read a book. There was one book about like like the the Grey Wardens were like Griffin like writers. Mm-hmm. And like they did, like bat, like they fought the arch demon in the sky while riding on griffins. There's not a single fucking griffin in Dragon Age Inquisition. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Nope. It was shit. Was so cool. But all the Grey Warden armor had like griffins and shit on it. Yeah, that was kind of. Cool. Well, any more feedback? No, no, that's that's it for this week. But like I said, if was, if there's anything that we talk about, like we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff today. A lot of Dishonored too. Lots some VR, bunch of stuff. If there's anything that you 
any anecdotes you have or any thoughts or, or opinions that you want to share with us about any of the stuff we talk about, you can leave a comment on the site at fourplayernetwork.com for this episode, which is 480, and we'll get to it at the beginning of the next show. So, unless anyone has anything else they want to throw in here, why don't we talk Tyranny. about this? Oh, oh, that's not where I was going. Okay, where are you going? I was going to say, let's start with Dishonored 2. Oh, yeah. D- Dishonored 2 is kind of the big thing, right? We've all been playing it. I think we're all enjoying it quite a bit. I don't think I've played it enough to enjoy. Where are you? <laughs> so where every, I know I know Carlos has finished it. Me I, and Brad are in the same. We're literally like in the same spot. We just finished. We I, just started mission four. I'm like an hour and twenty minutes into the game. So you're still like in the introduction. Yes. <laughs> okay. so I've, I haven't played enough. And Crispy is in mission four as well. I'm in the middle of mission four. So most of what we talk about tonight is going to well, pretty much be covering not. the first four missions. But yeah. I will say this: I've spent like. I think I'm on like seven or eight hours with the game, and I'm on mission four. Like, the first thing that jumps out to me, maybe more so than Dishonored One, is like just how large these maps are and these levels are. Because I've spent easily like three hours per major yeah. mission, story mission. Yeah. This game. yeah. I spent I spent at least an hour alone in like the first. Oh man. In the op- in just the introductory mission, quote unquote. So, it's this is a pretty pretty beefy game. Um, the footage that I that I recorded for this is actually from Mission Three, which is the Adamir Inst- Institute. Yeah, the Adamir. The uh, what, whatever the. It's it's like a sanitarium yeah. on the uh, on an island off the coast of Karnaka, where the uh, Shutter Island. The Doctor, what's her face? I don't know. Hypatia. Um, yeah, basically, this is where the the only like viable cure for oh, the Nick. for the blood fly plague is produced. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and one thing, like, this particular, like, the first, like, major mission takes place in Karnaka. You, you, after you leave Dunwall, you come to Karnaka, and you, you see this, the first, your first glimpse of, like, pretty much in, in Dishonored, as far, or as far as Dishonored goes in, in video game form, we haven't really seen much outside of Dunwall. Mm-hmm. So in this game, you leave Dunwall, and you come to Karnaka, and you suddenly have this, you're introduced to this big, like region of the universe that we've never seen before, mm-hmm. which was pretty striking. Like that entire first mission was awesome. Like that whole, like the, the whole city, you, you can kind of go anywhere, do whatever you want. And the, the map was fucking huge. And then I came to the second mission where you were at Adamire Institute. And I was like, I, it was kind of like at, at first, like I, I, you come up to it on the, on the boat or on the, uh, the rail car or whatever. And you see it. And I was like, this, this feels kind of like a step backwards, but like, as soon as you get into this mission, like, even if something looks, it, it was like a condensed level. Like you see it, it's like on a little island by itself. It's this one big building. And I was like, wow, that doesn't look like it's going to be very expansive compared to what I just played. Mm-hmm. I was totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I spent three and a half hours in this mission. Did you get down to the basement? Uh, secret area? No. What? what? Spo- yeah. I, I found a secret area like in the attic. Well, let me do a little spoiler thing for you. You have to uh, break the elevator. And it smashes through the ground all the way bottom, uh, unlocks the basement. It's like a what? little optional area that shows up on your quest log too. In, Are there additional like yeah. objectives and yeah, shit? Yeah, there is. What's in the basement? I'm not gonna tell you. Oh shit! Just just reselect that level. I really oh, don't want to play through this game for another. I don't remember what's so, in there. So this is the weird thing because Carlos Carlos stuff. finished the game and it's it's there is not a mission select in this game, which is the is weird. Are you sure? There is no mission select or new game plus option. So once you're done with the game, you want to like go back and maybe try some of the different powers you didn't play with. You can't. That's, That's the so weirdest weird. decision. I think it's ever. maybe because they want you to maybe play. With they as want the you to replay character. as a different character. Yeah. yeah, but you could do that anyways. Like, but what's why would they prevent you from going back and replaying missions? Because they're someone else. silly. Yeah, what happens after you've beaten the game with both characters? Maybe and then you're just like, we want to fuck around. Like, oh, I really like Mission 4. Let me load that up with Corvo or Emily. Well, you better have a save handy, homie. If you're going to yell, <laughs> thanks, just Carlos. leave the mask on. Yeah, thanks, Carlos. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... Just play as Corvo. We all play as Emily here, right? Correct. Yeah. I just don't I kinda, like I kind of wish I had played as Corvo, though. You don't like Emily's powers. Uh, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that like I don't see the point when I could just use Corvo's powers. I like Corvo's because these powers are new and fresh. <laughs> yeah, they're new. new. But, like the decoy power, I have it, and I've never found 
much use for it. Are the well, new powers only the, the the only the only one of her new powers that I'm like really into? Like far reach, which I use all the time, is just like blink. The major difference is that you can use far reach to grab things far away, which I've done exactly also one time. The also the big difference is in when you're using far reach, you you're total like you are not like teleporting. Like blink is more of a teleport. Right. This is just you're pulling yourself towards things, so you're right. visible. People like. Enemies can still see Which hasn't you. been a problem on normal difficulty because the guards don't have, like, crazy spatial awareness. <laughs> oh, no. really? I've, I'm playing on normal, and I've had several I've never had where... an issue with, with far reaching around and staying hidden. I've, I've, been playing, I've never once been seen like that. I've been playing on hard, and I've been dying a lot. But, but I did get this little shadow stealthy monster thing. I love that. And there's though. an upgrade that makes it fast. Like, that thing is really useful. Mm -hmm. Did you get the fast upgrade? No, I mean... You gotta get the fast upgrade. Like, honestly, you, you move, like, three times faster. I'm, I'm it turns working. you into, like, the shadow form. That crawls around and is real stealthy, and, and they don't see you very well. So, so like, I'm playing on hard, and they're hyper-aware. It's really kind of frustrating, but when I got that little shadow power, like, it's really easy to sneak around them. Uh, almost, you're almost invisible, but you're not completely invisible. Um, I'll say this, it's a little frustrating that, like, I'm always out of mana, though. Hmm. Like, just like in the first game, like, you only ever get back enough mana to be able to, like, yeah. blink. Yeah. But, like, the, so... I think at, that may be more a certain of an point, hard. Because I, I'm, I'm at a point where I almost have a... I almost have a co constantly, like, maxed out number of uh, elixirs that will refill automatically yeah. for both health and for mana. So mana has not been much of an issue. I just wish it, like, maybe recharged, like, slower but more because it's frustrating because after a certain point, I can't use any of my powers except for, like, blink. And, so, and, and I just don't have the... Crispy, are you saying you haven't, you haven't unlocked the stealth? Uh, the stealth. I haven't done shadow. the shadow form yet. Have you um, done? Uh, I have. I have Domino. I have Decoy. Domino, I, cool. I haven't used Decoy. I, Those I, are expensive abilities. So I just sense. unlocked Domino, but I haven't used it yet. I've but, used Domino once. There was one situation where it really helped out, but I had to do a lot of setup to make it pay off. <laughs> and the amount of setup I had to do, I could have easily just. But see, this is really cool because, like, like I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about it because I just unlocked Domino last night, and there's, there's actually a s scene in this footage, and this we were talking about this before, where you had mentioned there is a rune that's in, a, in the middle of a room that has like four guards in it. Yeah. And I was up, I was up above, and I was thinking about ways to get to it, and I at this point I had not upgraded Far Reach, so I couldn't pull it to me, which is one one way of doing it. So I ended up going on this long, elaborate thing where I'd like throw a bottle and like wait for them all to run out of the room, and then I'd kill a dude and grab it, and then like jump up through the ceiling, right? But if you have Domino, you can literally just pitch yourself above them and, like, link them together if you had upgraded it enough and then just jump down, kill one person, like, with a, uh, falling. Like a falling attack and kill them all that's instantly. That's exactly how I've used it. And that's, that's, that's fucking cool. It's cool. Did, like, did, did you see makes... the gif of, of, the, of the guard that was executing the civilian and they dominoed it and he shot the dude in the head and then the guard immediately went, flew forward. Like, he got shot in the back of the head. That's cool. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, That's it cool. looked really yeah, like, cool. Yeah, like like even their reactions are supposed to be mimicked, like depending on how you kill them. Mm -hmm. Which is you know what's one of the best details about this game when you shoot someone with a sleep dart, a sleeping dart, and you don't have to upgrade to where they fall asleep instantly. The combat. They like look at it in their arm and freak out for a little bit and then pass out. <laughs> yeah. Nice. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of little details in this game which I which I'm really enjoying, but. Um, Brad? What? I feel like you were so vocal about like you were out there talking about this game for like 30 minutes for the oh, show. No, now we're on I'm the actual show and you're not talking about oh, it. Oh, well, I mean, I'll say this. I mean, <laughs> this game su succeeds for the same reasons the first one did. And I think the best part of Dishonored is like it's pretty amazing level design. And, and I, I, I almost, I almost, calling it level design almost seems kind of like simple. Like, I, I feel like Arcane is incredibly. <laughs> adept at making like believable like games like sp spaces but, like it this doesn't feel like a level it feels like a building yeah you know it, it, and it feels it feels like it's designed like a building and works like a building and, and a lot of video game levels are more like little disneyland you know parks or whatever where you know don't peek behind the corner or you can't actually jump over this like the this this waist high box because they don't want you to go over there an area in dishonored is a place it's not a uh, video game level. Does mm -hmm. that make any sense? Like, yeah. like, it, it, and that adds so much to 
to like ex- uh, to just inhabiting these spaces. Uh, peeking behind the curtain doesn't ruin the experience. There is no There's... curtain to peek behind. It's yeah. just you're well, in a place. Cool. It's kind of cool when it feels like there is, but you do it, and then it's just more of the light. And you're yeah, like, exactly. Like, like in the Clockwork Mansion, when like the panels and the walls start shifting, and you slip behind them into the space behind the walls, and then it's like, okay, now you're in the now you're in the walls of the house. What are you gonna do now? That's yeah. so cool. And you can even <laughs> swim and stuff. So like when you're on this level. Um, and you're on this island sanitarium. There's you can go anywhere. Oh, did anyone in that first real level? Did anyone find the sunken ship? I, I heard some somebody mention that, but I never actually. Or no, the the shop, the the, the black market shop sold like a tip, or sold like a map mm-hmm. to to an underwater like sunken oh, ship. I bought that map, but I didn't. I, I, I completely for forgot it. to do that. But that's so cool. Like, there's even. Do you ever go back to Karnaka and like just that one area? Like, because that to me that area that one area felt very much like a hub almost. But I guess no. I mean, that was just a that was just place. A place. Man, I'm I'm liking all these tips because y'all have passed all this, and so now y'all know what y'all missed. But I can do it now. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> now I have the chance. That's yeah. that's that's true. Um, it's just it's 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 so, it's so. Like there, World there was a one, there was one instance where I was running around in Karnaka and I, I found like an apartment as you sometimes do, because like in in the first dishonor, the the big thing was the rat plague. Yep. So and I feel like I feel like almost, like that's almost like a theme running through dishonor. Like this now we have the rat plague is is over. This, that happened like 15 years prior to this. So now we have blood flies, um, and they have they have like quarantined certain buildings that have been infested with blood flies and whatnot, so you can't get into them, or you not supposed to go into them, but you find your way into them, you can find hidden stuff in there, but like there was one uh, building I found my way up to and I found a door that was locked, I didn't have a key for it, and I was like, what the fuck, I, I, I could peek in the keyhole, I couldn't really see anything, but I just, I was like, I, 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 don't, I don't have any way of getting in there, you can probably pickpocket a key off someone. But I just decided to, you know, pop a grenade down. Right, I know I fucked that Who's up. Who's this boner plan? I, right dude, now. I fucked this up so bad. This oh this room was such you, a pain in the ass to get. But goddamn it, I got that rune. Yeah, you I did. fucked it up so many times. You made, you made it as difficult for yourself I know, as this possible. Is, this is so painful. But uh, one thing I'm trying to do with this game, I'm trying my best, and I always have this problem when I'm to playing stealth reload. games. I'm trying to fight the urge to reload. That's dude, good. I'm doing it so much. I'm doing it so that, much. It's taking me like four hours. It took me. That this mission right here, I think, actually did take me three and a half hours to finish. But I don't, well, I don't reload. But like someone hard, I died so fast. No. Like they, they just walk up to me and stab me in the stomach. There are like, very what? few occasions though where I fuck up as bad as what you just saw. <laughs> so mm-hmm. usually I don't reload. Um, but there are there have been several instances where I was like, well, I just fucked that up royally. Um, or you just like feel guilty about things that's happening in the game. Like, well, there's, there's like, a, like the there's... guard, like the first time you see the guard like execute the guy in the street, and you're just kind of like, "Fuck, I want to stop that." <laughs> like, so I reload. I almost feel like real. I, I I almost feel like this game would be better if they if this is, this is not really possible, but if like you couldn't reload. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah. If I you agree. couldn't reload, like it would just make it because that those those moments where you adapt and you just decide to say fuck it and try and resolve a situation that that gets out of your gets out of hand. Mm-hmm. Like that's when it's like some of the most satisfying moments in the game for me. Oh but, yeah. But I had to fight the urge so hard to like, oh he saw me or oh I killed that guy. Maybe I shouldn't have because now they have a quick load yeah. and a quick save. Which makes it real easy and real tempting to just oh I'll just fucking reload. Which so part of me is like I really appreciate that feature because it makes quick saving really easy, but it also at the same time makes loading reloading really fucking easy. Yeah. So that kind of sucks, but I'm getting better at resisting. I think more games should have like an auto save kind of thing, where you just can't reload. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it would. But then again, like it, you it would is play the game of, differently because oh, yeah, but because you wouldn't take as many risks. But because of the nature of this game, because there are so many mechanics, there are so many abilities, and there's so many options. Like you kind of have like it's, there's so many ways to fuck things up so bad. To the I think sometimes. Uh, Sometimes the reason why I reload is just because it break like what's happening is like killing my immersion in the whole experience. Yeah, it's like if if but if an alarm on this side of the map went off and like I murdered everybody and then immediately walk like twenty feet down the street and there's another checkpoint where they they just have no idea that anything just happened. Yeah, it just, it that makes it feel so fucking video gamey to me and I'm, like the um. 
Have you started the Clockwork Mansion? I have mm-hmm. not gone inside the mansion. Okay, but, but you in, know the I'm... street area that you go to first, right? Yes. Like, you start off, before you even get to the Clockwork Mansion, there's, like, a big urban area that you have to work your way through to get up to the mansion. Mm-hmm. And in that area, there's, a, there's like, a train depot that's guarded by one of those wall of lights. Yeah. And I got a rewire tool and rewired the wall of light, snuck inside, and then one guard spotted me. And it started this weird chain reaction where, like, that guy spotted me, and then three other people spotted me, and then four like like other guards followed them over here so i had this like for two minutes there was this constant parade of people like running into the wall of light and just vaporizing and like they were watching each other do it and still like <laughs> like running into Not it learning their lesson and then i thought they were all dead and then i heard one more like hey and the guy like ran towards me and blew up it's just like at that point it's so goofy i'm just like wow yeah it, i mean <laughs> Because this this game does a phenomenal job of making you feel immersed. Yeah. And things like that do threaten to re- to like pull you out of it, which, which really sucks. Um, so I see, I definitely see what you're saying. But if this is like, and honestly, as you play more, as you get better at, it, you get more confident at, it, you do feel less inclined to reload. Because I think... Well, you, you got to get familiar with the mechanics, understand what does what and when you're okay to do what. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the first... The first little bit of me playing this game, I started reloading quite a bit, but then eventually I was just like, eh, whatever, you know, I can figure things out. Yeah. Now, I don't know, I'm not sure why, because I, I, you know, I had kind of a weird reaction to playing Deus Ex. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And a lot of people were like, well, maybe it's because it's more of the same. And, you know, part of me was like, you know, you might be right. I like Deus Ex Human Revolution a lot, but maybe I didn't, I didn't necessarily want more, as I, like I thought I did. Um, and, and, you know, for all intents and purposes, Dishonored 2 is more Dishonored. Yeah. But yeah. for whatever reason, I... I mean, these it, are two different games you're talking about, though, because with with Deus Ex Human Revolution, that was, like, a full, like, I don't know, 30-, 40-hour RPG experience. Yeah. Like, getting more of that, getting another one of those, is completely different than getting more levels of a game that the original one had 12 levels. And it's like... It's a very replayable, experimental, like, kind of gameplay. So the original Dishonored, you'd go back and play a bunch. Like, you'd play yeah. it over and over again. Like, I, I did that. I, I was going on a kick of that a couple months ago when I was getting excited about this game. This is a great game to have more of that. Yeah. Because this is this really is just kind of like a giant map pack of yeah. more Dishonored levels. And these maps are fucking huge. They're pretty cool. Really I well. still, like, hate kind of hunting and pecking for some of this shit in these environments there's just so much like finding stuff, like you know? finding a cabinet and there's like a coin a single coin in it yeah yeah the the, 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 the keep closing the drawer instead of picking the yeah <laughs> the, the reward is not always Cash worth it you open it oh, try to get the coin oh my god it close it. Yeah. And, and the animation forever, to open like, it back nah. up. has anybody experimented with the crafting of the bone charms no. I did that yesterday. I was waiting time. until I was done with the game so I could load up a earlier save to do it, God but I guess I'm it. fucked. God damn it, Carlos. Uh, is it worth it? Uh, the, yeah. The, oh, yeah. The thing is, you, so you have a... Can you, you have even, a, like, make a bill? Well, you have a limited almost? number of slots for bone charms, right? But yeah. you, if you craft, you can find that raw raw whale bone everywhere, and you can, you can essentially... Look, I'm not sure how deep this goes, but you can, like, take... You can take two... <sighs> Bone charms merge them together so that one bone charm has the effects of both, oh. and then place them in. So you can essentially, and if you use if you two, do that with like curse bone charms, will it remove the negative effects? I don't know. Curse, I think I've still only still I've literally only crafted one bone charm so far. Hey, but it seems like a really cool way of of improving your character. Can I say something? Yeah. There's too many notes in this game. <laughs> there are. I've been reading. and they're all like books. They're all like fucking. Books. They're like Skyrim. I've been reading them all. Yeah, me too. It's, there are a lot of them are really interesting. This, it's this, just this uh, this game has done a really good job of fleshing out the world, like the the island of the the empire of the islands, Will like Punk. all the different uh, islands involved in that, and that um, what's the name of the giant like supercontinent? To uh, the Pangea. The, it's it's similar. Pandisian. It's like Pendician. 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 Leave it to leave, leave it to Chris Davis. At this point. I'm like, fuck, I want to know more about what, what that is. This giant, horribly dangerous, untamed, wild continent. Yeah, and there's... Just, like, hanging out over the horizon. Like, there's a lot of journals and stuff that you read that are just, like, the adventures and like of exp- of explorers exploring this world. And you're, I was, you know, reading all these things and, like, wow, like, they're really fleshing it out to the point where it's like, if there are more Dishonored games, they could continue yeah. and go well outside of the walls of Dunwall, outside of this continent, and, you know, keep getting bigger and more... 
uh, elaborate and I don't know. It's it's cool, but you're right. It's a lot of fucking reading, which is terrible for like the broadcast. Mm. Oh yeah. I was trying no. to broadcast it, but I was like, I don't want to not read these notes because yeah. these are really interesting. You gotta read them out loud. Oh god. In like a British voice. Yeah, mm-hmm. precisely. That's what I did. In a British voice. Uh, and these fucking blood flies, man. They're annoying. Annoying as hell. Um. Yeah, y'all y'all seem very quiet. What? I mean, I can't. Uh, not a lot for me to say. Yeah, I mean, I've played, played a the couple game levels. Uh, it it seems like Dishonored, and I like Dishonored, so I'm glad I, I'm playing it. I don't like I don't like how leaning works in this game now. How is it different from Dishonored One though? Uh, in Dishonored One, whenever you were hiding behind an object and you leaned out. As long as your body was behind the object, you were still invisible. Yeah, you but if you, but if you're so if you poke your head out, you can they can see they you. They can see you. Yeah, they can see you. The, in I'll, this one, they, in this one, they can. In this yeah. other one, they couldn't. Well, yeah. Well, the AI in this game, like the, or the the enemy characters, feel like they they can spot you way better than they could in Dishonored yeah. One, even in normal mode. And, and also it's, it's, something it's else noticeable. with the lean is that whenever you let go of the le- of the button that makes you, you don't lean, unlean. You have to like lean back to yeah. the center. It doesn't automatically. Center your view. Yeah, you it's a little jank the there. Yeah, but I like how you can kind of like analog control where you're looking and leaning like above or mm-hmm. around, and that is so cool. Yeah, when you're behind a cover and you can kind of look up and left mm-hmm. and right. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and you know I haven't played Dishonored one in a long time, but I, I feel like the like the combat in this game, or like the contextual stuff, mm-hmm. is way better. Unless um, maybe I just didn't do enough of it in the first one, but like the fact that you 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 can like slide and jump and then. At any one of in any of these scenarios, you can tap R one or R two to like do a stealth takedown or a kill, mm-hmm. um, for, and they're all contextual. contextual yeah. Like that's like the, like Crispy mentioned earlier how he was chasing someone and did like a slide, and then as he was sliding like right underneath them, like held R one and did, like took them out mm-hmm. while he was sliding. Like the fact that you can do all that stuff is really fucking cool. Yeah. And I feel like they've it improved feels that quite a bit. Off too. Like the game feels and controls really well. Especially in, in, in like in context of like the the world as a whole, because mm-hmm. like I said, it's huge. You can kind of go anywhere, do whatever, and you. I you feel can't like go you back were, though, huh? Oh, you but back. you can't go back <laughs> except for that part. Shit. I do feel like the blinking in Aragami was snappier than it is in this game. How do you mean snappy? Maybe that's because it was third person. Well, are you talking about? Well, that was more of a blink ability. You're playing as Emily. Far reach does not. Far reach ability does not work like blink. A lot of people are comparing it and calling it like it is. I guess the blink equivalent for yeah, Emily. Of course, but it's, it doesn't work. To say. It's like grappling hook, unlike blink, which is literally a teleport. Yeah. So you have to be able to. You have to visibly see something. You have to be close enough to be within range. You have to hook on to something in order to. Well, it's use not a it. great grappling hook, man. The grappling hook in Titanfall Two. It's fucking cool. There's a grappling hook in Titanfall 2? Oh, yep. man. Mm-hmm. Well, I did. I just I got it in a, mul- a multiplayer match. You get it. And, and, uh, and like, at first I was like, oh, you use it to get up places and swing around. But no, man. You're, like, sprinting in, in like, a thing. And you, like, y- y- throw it at the ground to, like, just fucking, whip get, like, whip yourself around that corner. Like, it's fucking cool. It's like some fucking Attack on Titan shit. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen that. So, but sure. Um. Yeah, Dishonored. But I mean, I, I I need to play more of this, Nick. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna try and finish it this weekend. So chances are we'll probably talk about it again on our next episode, which uh, next next week's Thanksgiving. We'll figure yeah. that out. But we'll talk at length about Dishonored two once we've all had a chance to finish it. Um, but Brad, you've been playing something that I've been I'm playing kind of curious game. about. I should have transitioned when we were talking about reading notes on the feed. Uh, so I, I, I could have transitioned to my game on that comment, too. So. Yeah. We've, we've been reading a lot of notes. Well, you don't read much in Persona. I really want to hear about this. all voice acting? <laughs> I, look on I guess face, 4 like, has a lot more voice acting. I mean, yeah, 4 has a decent amount of voice acting, but there's still plenty of fucking shit to read in that game. Well, not in 4. 4 is mostly voice acted. I understand there's a lot of voice acting, mm-hmm. but like I said, there's still plenty of reading. Well, you're doing a lot. More reading when you're playing. T- oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, tyranny. Who's gonna do it? Okay, yeah. I'm talking about tyranny. Brad's taking it back. We're talking tell about me, tyranny. Tell me about tyranny. I'm curious. This is the new Obsidian RPG. You know, last year they launched uh, their successfully kickstarted Pillars of Eternity, which mm-hmm. was a throwback to an old Baldur's Gate game. It kind of played just like that. Even the UI was very similar to Baldur's Gate. Um, uh, tyranny is a game running in that engine and it, it, it plays a lot like it um it looks a lot like it 
but it has it's it's a very different game in in, in the the way that the game is set up and the way the story works and and kind of the size of the game is designed like so like pillars of return you play that thing for like 70 hours or some shit mm -hmm. uh, this game like people are kind of clocking in like 20 to 25 it, it's a game that that's designed to be replayed and I, I think the reason is is because of the way it's structured uh the story of this game is kind of unique uh the, what was the the that the, has the tagline of like sometimes evil wins or whatever mm -hmm. right and this launched like on election day and it was you know a lot of people were making like jokes and stuff um as but the, as they do but yeah you play as as sort of like the the uh the lieutenant or whatever of like this guy this like ultimate evil dude who's like taking over the world and he's he's mostly done that there's like one little province left that he's trying to take over, right? And, and you play as as like, you know, one of his lieutenants, and uh, you're you, like the you're, Darth you're, Vader to his. Evil you're Emperor. leading two armies, two different like bad guy armies, into not leading, but but like you're. Well, let me explain. There's two evil armies mm -hmm. that are are trying to take over this last province. You're all bad. Yep, everyone's bad. everyone's bad. Uh, but the well, like. The the two different factions are like two different kinds of evil. It's more like you know lawful evil versus chaotic evil, but they're both evil, mm -hmm. right? Gotcha. And and you're at the start of this game. There's like this kind of like choose your own adventure setup where you're kind of explaining, uh, uh, or, or you're kind of choosing the decisions that these two armies are are, are making as they kind of take over like parts of this of this like like province. And, and, and the choices you make in that, like, setup part of the game dictate the way the game kind of plays out um, in, in some, some key ways. But but throughout the course of that, like, setup phase, you're kind of saying, in this situation, I'm going to side with uh, uh, this army, this, you know, lawful evil army. And in this case, I'm going to side with this army because you're presented with these choose your own adventure situations and sometimes, you know... One sounds a little less evil, or they're all evil, but it's more like, you know, oh, we need to kill them, or no, let's keep them alive because we can use their secrets or whatever, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You're you're a bad dude, but 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 you're actually there to represent the ultimate evil guy, and and you have these things called edicts, which are are these things that these like spells. I'm sorry, did you say eat dick? <laughs> An edict. <laughs> okay, the setup is. The attempt to take over this final province is going to shit because these two armies are like fighting. They have very different views on the way things are going and it's going poorly. So your ultimate evil ruler is like, listen, you're going to go there. You're going to read this edict, which is kind of like this spell. And basically, if these two armies and you don't figure this out and get your shit together, you all die. Like reading the edict also like kind of cast this spell and you have eight days to conquer this fucking region or you both armies and everyone in this province dies because the ultimate evil ruler is sick of it and it's very much like fallout one where you have a time limit to get like the water chip right like you yeah. always have this time limit this eight days hanging over you and every time you know you go to the different areas and you sleep and you rest it kind of like chips away at that so there's kind of this sense of urgency or or if not, if you've not played Fallout One, think like Pikmin or something. I thought these are the kind of games that make you really uncomfortable. It's like, like oh, Majora's... they do. Okay, just um, and I'm a little uncomfortable. <laughs> I am uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable. I am actively now, uncomfortable. I, I haven't played enough to where it's really started kind of wearing on me yet, but it, it is a little nerve wracking because these are the kind of games that I like to, you know, take my time and inch through. And it's not a real time timer, but but everything you do in the game kind of takes time does that make sense like when you there's like travel time there's rest mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. you know like Baldur's Gate or like Dragon Age or something um so I mean but it's it's a really cool setup because you're kind of playing these two off of each other but you're also evil too but you're also kind of but looking out for yourself and it, 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 it's very it's very like faction based progression and story and there's even a way it's really tough I uh, from what I understand um, to even side with like the rebellion that is about to be wiped out so I think the shorter st uh, uh, size of the game and, and and how everything is so such choice driven is is 
it makes it so you know it encourages people to replay it and and oftentimes you get to the end of, of like a game like pillars of eternity or divinity and you're like oh man that's so good i want to play it again and do some things different but they're like monster 80 hour rpgs yeah. you're like oh, i don't have to, time you're to like, do that but this, I'm but this on. game you know i feel like it, it has a much more manageable size and uh if 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 you do want to, you know, play it again, uh, I mean, I but what, but what is the actual? Like, you haven't talked at all about like the actual like gameplay. Like, oh, well, it's like Pillars of Eternity or Baldur's Gate or or e even like Dragon Age Origins or something. Uh, it's real time with pause combat, so uh, you have a party of four people as opposed to six, like in Baldur's Gate or Pillars of Eternity. Um, but uh, but you know, you kind of pause, you kind of issue commands. And you kind of unpause and have that play out, or like Kotor or Dragon Age, you know that that type of combat system. Yeah, um, it, it's very much like that. Of course, it's isometric because you know it's old school throwback style. I mean, that's what worked. You know, for, I mean, Pillars of Eternity did really well. Um, the, the fact that you only have four party members, I think, works in its favor because because a real time with Paul's style combat system is very micromanagey. You're pausing, you're issuing commands for six people, is a little is a little cumbersome so now that you're only doing it for four it's pretty nice because you know you kind of focus on on yeah focus you know more on the strategy and less on just the fucking interacting with the ui for six goddamn characters and i, I feel like the the encounters too have, have like less trash mobs they're they're like fewer enemies and it, and it seems pretty challenging so i i kind of like the how they change sort of the the size of these battles yeah. Um, in, in a much more manageable way, kind of like w going from like tactics over to Final Fantasy Tactics. They went from like ten units on the field to five units on the field. It just plays quicker because you, you have less dudes to manage. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I like it. It's just it's a, it's a lot of reading, and so much of the core game is is reading these stories and and making these decisions. And it's all very well written. You know, it's made by Obsidian, and, and that stuff's really great. But it's it's a hard game to broadcast. Because, you know, you, you, it's just a lot of reading. I mean, you can't play this game and not voice act it on the feed. all the reading lately? Um, so I kind of have to voice act it, but then I get a little exhausted and kind of like... It can be, yeah. I kind of just read fast and skip over stuff. Like, at uh, first you start doing all the voices. Yeah. And I don't know how then you then fuckers do that. Like, halfway through, you're like, eh, whatever. I voice act... Like, I'll read... I'll Like, when I was playing Dishonor, I started reading the notes, and I got through, like, two of them, and I was like, oh, this is great. And then, like, three or four, I was like, okay. It, I mean, it depends. I mean, you're just why, reading a note. Your horses this while is I read why it. video game voice actors are fighting for fair compensation. Well, I'll say this. Fair enough. Reading a note is, fair enough. is a little more boring than reading dialogue between characters. I yeah. mean, reading dialogue between characters can get fun, but it gets a little exhaustive when you run out of voices. Yeah. And eventually when I was playing, Especially I just started you don't doing have that many to begin with. I just started doing the same voice for everything, but yeah. it was still a voice. Just Well, that's kind of like that's one of the like <laughs> Owlboy. Like, oh my god, like there was a lot of characters in that. A lot of dialogue. Like, uh huh? A lot of lot of I heard there's a lot of uh, like story dialogue. Oh yeah, there's scenes. a lot. By the way, Owlboy. I've been playing that during my lunch breaks. Yeah. And yeah, it's a great lunch break tr game. Trying to do that while broadcasting was like, oh, it was exhausting. Slow. Did you did you ever finish that? Uh, no. Just cuz other games. What are we doing, out. guys? Owlboy, I've, I've heard Owlboy is like a like I less than 10 I still hours. haven't touched it, but I've had so little time. I'm, to I'm play at things. like 7 hours. I'm almost done. Yeah. I could probably finish it in one sitting. All right. Can I talk about a game real quick? Uh, uh Go for it. Yeah. VR. Played a VR game. VR puffin stuff. What? 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 Okay, I played a VR. VR puffin stuff. I played Robinson the Journey. It's a dinosaur game. All you fuckers should be happy. I played a goddamn dinosaur game. It's a bit of a walking simulator. Did you try the cheat code. More to the street is you can't sprint in that game. You okay? You have no idea. First of all, I want to say Robinson the Journey. Pretty cool. Like it. It. it more than anything. Robinson the Journey just reiterated to me that yes, I'm still very, 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 very much interested in what VR can do. After playing things like Here They Lie, I messed around with some of the other VR demos that came with that. I played The Kitchen again. I played uh, dr I played a Drive Club demo. There's some cool <laughs> oh shit in God, VR. Where are your okay. arms? You need to play that platformer that yes, me and Carlos Glover? played. They're invisible. So, Glover, ah! so, this game is literally. So, you play this kid, Robin, who's crashed on this. Di this planet of dinosaurs, and you go out and is you. Is his name Robin Robinson? No, I don't, I don't know why it's, his is, name is, is Robin, his name but they call him. Y? But it's called Robinson. I don't fucking know. 
It's weird. Is it R O B Y N? No, it's not. Improper okay. spelling. But I will tell you this: she, I did let Robin play it, and she was the entire time. It's like voice acting. You have this little robot that flies around. It's like Robin. And it's, it's fucking weird. Yeah. Um, did you did you not she, tell her she his name was Robin, and she yeah. just thought it was? She didn't fun. understand that it doesn't do that for everybody's <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> no, yo, know, I probably shouldn't. Have, I probably yeah. shouldn't have mentioned that. That would have been a good joke. But no, I told her before before oh. that happened. Um, but. This the, it would have been good if you had been like, oh, you have to say your name like five times out loud, and it will like recognize it. <laughs> oh man, there would be and she's just sitting there. So with many the missed on. opportunities. Robin, Robin, <laughs> Robin. <laughs> so many missed opportunities. Um, Are you pronouncing that with a? God damn it! Let me talk. Okay. About, like, okay. Is all you do is climb? No, no, no. <laughs> First of all, the climbing. I'm kind of glad I recorded this footage of the climbing because it's. <laughs> It's can, it's kind of weird. Can you just let go? <laughs> you use you, yeah, you can. You can totally <laughs> you fall. fall. You 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 alternate the the right R two and L two to like move, and you literally yeah. have, you have to use your head to look around and point at you know objects. And as soon as it you know you're on something, you can grab onto the hand will like close mm -hmm. around it, so you know you can move onto it. And it gets the, it's really awkward at first, but you get to the point where you can oh, start shit. doing it really fast. Um, but essentially, all you're doing in this game is you're you're trying to find these. Um, Records that fell out that that are from your ship that crashed. So mm -hmm. you're kind of exploring this 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 world that's obviously inhabited by dinosaurs. The problem is, as Carlos mentioned, there's no run button in this game. There's no sprint. It's it's literally a walking you probably, simulator. You probably need the move controllers and go like this. No, you don't need it. <laughs> it just it just needed a. Do you play with the move controller because you I'm can. pretty sure he has a move controller. Yeah, you can. I'm pretty sure because the little device that you use to scan things in the game looks like a fucking move controller, as you can see. Um, but I thought you just, it was a pepper grinder. You literally just walk around this island. You see dinosaurs. You can scan them with uh, with that move controller looking thing, um, which. is... That's kind of like the biggest mechanic in the game. So you're you're scanning dinosaurs to learn more about them, and like you have like a little obviously like a Pokédex kind of thing that you're filling up. Mm -hmm. But to scan them, you have to you you press R1, and you see these little green and red dots appear on a, on an animal, mm -hmm. and you have to you have to use your head to look around and like, and like you, have, you have to touch the green dots mm -hmm. with your cursor without touching the red dots. If you touch the red dots, they freak out and it starts over. But the dinosaurs are also moving around, yeah. so it's it can be tricky. Um, that's kind of the deepest mechanic of the game. Other than that, you're literally just kind of walking around and taking in the world and, and seeing it in VR, which is really cool. Um, and like they do, they they there are several moments that are straight out of fucking Jurassic Park. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, you you no. walk out of this cave. And the first thing you see is a, uh, and I think I get to it in this footage at some point, but you walk out of a cave and you, there's a... Dinosaur. Like a, yes, there is a dinosaur. There is a Brachiosaurus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What you know, kind of dinosaur is that? Don't worry, Nick. It's a Vegisaurus. Did you wear your pants while you were playing this? It means arm lizard. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. Were you pantsless, Nick? I was not pantsless while I was playing this, pantsless you sons Nick. of bitches. Robin but I'll tell you... I'll tell you... <laughs> Nobody was pantsless. I'm just the 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 That's funny. <laughs> the the cool thing about this experience uh -huh. was that, and it, it's it's kind of hard. Like we've said when we've been broadcasting other VR games, but like when when um like you know when we look, like we're playing here they lie and you can look over and you can see like the verticality of it. But when you're when you're in it, it feels incredibly. Like, like the the verticality is way more yeah. dramatic when you're yeah. in the VR, as opposed to people watching it on a screen and they're like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool, whatever. But it looks way, way cooler when you're actually. It's, it's kind of like what we were talking about when we were playing the uh, Until Dawn game. Yeah, that like when you're on when that you're going part, the, the, like it, when as soon as you start going in the tunnel, you're like, holy shit, this is huge. But when you're watching someone on the screen, look up, it's like, oh, that no, doesn't look big. And but when you're in the VR, like it is, it feels. Big. Yeah. Like you're actually it's standing at the base of something very large. Yeah. So when I walked walked out of this cave and I saw this this long neck as mm -hmm. they call it in the game, but it does it literally does like remember when uh, in Jurassic Park the first the, when they first see the dinosaurs for the first time and Dr. Grant takes off his glasses or whatever mm -hmm. and you see the brachiosaurus sort of lift up off his uh, you know onto his hind legs and like try and get something out of the, the tr tall tree. Yeah. Exactly that moment. Oh, wow. But you walk out and you're in VR and you look up and you're like, holy shit. And then it starts playing the recorder. And like It does not. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> <laughs> I should have I should have had that music playing in the oh, background. It would have been, been it would have been epic. But you need to play a non first person game though. 
I think that was a melodica. I'm oh, really, okay, I'm course. really still confused about how VR non third per like non first That's person games. That's what I was trying to tell you. I played this this game on the playroom, and I got Carlos to play it too. Like it really the was platformer. A yes. Yeah, where you're like did, behind him the whole time. But yeah, I played that. Did, isn't that fucking? It's like, so cool. Fucking cool. But it is that so like cool. I would play if Nintendo did a VR and they the did a Mario by the way, game. If you leave the footage rolling, you'll see that dinosaur moment in a second. Don't okay. cut the footage yet. I don't remember what Let it's it roll. called. Like, like, I was, f I played this little demo, this this playroom demo, and I was fucking sold on it, man. Like, if Nintendo made a Pikmin game or a Mario <laughs> game in VR like that, it would blow... I fucking it, it was kind of cool because it's like you're in the game yeah. and the little character is like looking up at you like hey yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you, like you gotta try and your controller it, your controller is like in the world and you physically use it to do things so like there'll be these gaps that like you need to get your little guy across so you like fling a grappling hook from your controller over and he jumps up on the line and walks across it's a crazy it's really sensation cool. is, is, like, that, is that on, on the paper? demo disc yeah the, oh. it's a it's part of the playroom demo. That's not oh. on the demo disc. You down download that from the store, or maybe when you installed your VR stuff, it's already there. But it's one of the demos in there. It's the only single player one I think you can actually do. But do it because it, it is a new, different perspective that you probably haven't gotten in VR yet. That kind of like yeah, sold me on VR have, a little. Everything more. I've played has been first person. Like I would totally play a Mario game like that because you see these little dudes like up there, and you really gotta like, like it's you it's, have to turn it's your head. Fucking, like, you're the camera. It's crazy. Like I, I can't even describe. Like that's the one thing. One thing while playing Robinson that that that, that kind of made me, all, that reiterates me the things I really like about VR is like, like UI. It's it's kind of opening a lot of doors for UI because literally I would pull up this menu and I would navigate things in the menu just by looking at it. Yeah. And, and and that just feels so much easier than much like more cycling through yeah. things with an analog yeah. stick. And yeah, especially where the menus are really busy and you have to like tap 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 it, to yeah. get down to something. It's yeah. still this head is just based, look though. at like, it. Like when we get to the X. point where that stuff can be eye based, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, well, eventually we'll get there. So here's 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 that moment I was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you walk you out of this cave, cave and you're like, oh, what's that? Oh, look, it's a bracket. Oh my god! I bet it felt seemed really huge. God damn it. But like that moment right there in VR where it like he stands up, up like that. He's even trying to eat Yeah, no, anything? that's exactly it's, like it's yeah, fucking Jurassic incredible. Yeah. It's fucking incredible. He wasn't incredible. even eating anything. Though. No, no, but like, so you have this little dinosaur companion. You have a little baby T-Rex. What? That name is Laika. Runs around with you, so. And Laika runs out and then roars at it and did freaks you it out. So. Like a masturbate while <laughs> staring at it? No, I did not. But Laika's very cute. Mm -hmm. Nice dinosaur. Um... But like I said, like I played, the, I played the game. I did pretty much the entire thing in one. So can you interact with the giant brachiosaurus penis? No. Oh, okay. Y'all are giving this game too much credit as far as <laughs> interactivity goes. It's, it's very, it's very <laughs> basic. Correct. It looks nice. <laughs> it it looks nice, especially in VR. It's a, it's a, it runs very well. Um, it has it's got some minor puzzle based things. You get to a point at the very end where suddenly you are in a situation where you're you're having to do like stealth, trying to avoid raptors, mm -hmm. which is a pretty dramatic departure from everywhere else. Everything else you've done in the game up until that point, yeah. and at that point I was like, I cannot believe there's not a run button right here. It, I got to a point where I, I walked around a corner and I locked eyes with a Velociraptor. I was like, fuck, it saw me, and I turned around. And in any other game, I turned around would have been running to save my life, and I was just walking away like, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me, and it just fucking killed me. Like, yeah. stuff can kill you in this game. Yeah, I mean, it, it does. It's not very like graphic or animated. Oh, it's no, like if it are sees you. you make it, Nick? Go. Yeah. What is this Frogger? Um, there's all there was also one moment where you have to like reactivate all these terminals, right? Mm -hmm. You have to put this battery in and turn this knob, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it's like put your you know you put your eyes up to the thing to uh, you know scan you know your retinal scan or whatever. And I was sitting here, I was like, where the, what the how the fuck does this work? It didn't tell me how to do it. And then I was like, oh wait a second, you actually have to like lean your head in into like, the, get the thing, and camera, if you get yeah. close enough, it actually scans your eyes, nice. which is kind of cool. Like <clears throat> little touches like that. It, it, this does feel very much like kind of a hefty tech demo in a lot of ways, which is weird. It's a Crytek game. This is from the guys that made Crisis. Yep. Um, and in a lot of ways, it shows it's a very beautiful game. It's just not very mechanically deep or anything. So it's not a game, it's a toy. Yeah, no, it's an, it's, it's an experience. It's more of a tech. Yeah. It's it's a tech demo. That's what a lot it, of the the VR games are. You wouldn't call them games. You'd call them experiences. It, it's more of a proof. It's more yeah. of just a proof of 
concept. For and that's me. that's the only reason I haven't gone further, and that's why I don't have a PlayStation VR. I'm not saying these are bad. I'm sure they're great. It's just I don't feel like it's worth it yet. Yeah. For the main fact that yeah, most of the games that are out right now are just experiences that are you know showing people what they can do and almost giving ideas to other people about what they can do in games. Yeah. Also, it does the same thing that Here They Lie does, which where you can turn or you. You, it does those like the fade out thing where you turn, yeah, and I think that, I think that must be like a motion sickness thing. It, they it's, have to do it's, that. It's like something very early on that, that they're doing to avoid motion sickness, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, although here they lie, kind of gave you the ability to not do that and turn your head and <clears> just have <throat> the character move whichever, in whichever direction you're turning your head, mm-hmm. which for me worked fine. I didn't have any issues with motion sickness at all, but I know some people probably will have that problem. Um, in this game. You, you pretty much have to do the thing where you fucking tap it, and it's it's obnoxious. So I'm really, really hoping they find a better way of doing that soon. I'm, I'm a little worried about Resident Evil 7 because mm, yeah. I, after playing Here They Lie and playing Robinson, like I am an Until Dawn. Like I want to if if it's if it's doable, I want to play Resident Evil 7 in its entirety in VR. Oh yeah, totally. But that implies that between the launch of the VR and Resident Evil 7, like Resident Evil 7 will be the first game that like. The full length, full game, length yeah. game. We are expecting them to have something better than tapping the D pad to do these quick fade turns, yeah. which are not like that rips you out of the experience. So I'm hoping that they have something better in mind and ready to go for Resident Evil Seven because they hope so too. Yeah, <laughs> there's no way <laughs> that game tra- is not me. getting delayed. I mean, that game is still going to get delayed. They've shown like nothing of that game. Honestly, if if if. If getting it delayed means a better VR experience, I'll be okay with it. If getting it delayed means a better experience, period. period. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. Like, because I, I they <laughs> they they showed more teasers of of like combat. They're probably going to delay it so you can have dual audio. But I mean, they they announced the the they announced the release oh, wow. date when they announced the game okay. of Resident Evil Seven. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. So I've. I've and you know we haven't had it's been a while since Resident Evil Six. I feel like they only would have done that if they had known. Like, I feel like it would have been delayed by now. Hmm. It's coming out in January. Hmm. Remember, remember that time Alpha Protocol got delayed the day after it came out? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Except it didn't come out. Yeah. So it was like the day after it was supposed to release. And people were like, where is it? And, and like, like oh, a day delayed. later, Sega was like, we delayed it. Oh my god! Sorry, yeah. we forgot to tell you. That was great. That's awesome. <clears throat> Which everyone knew. Because we were like, there's no way Alpha Protocol is coming out. And then sure enough, it hit that day, and it didn't come out. But they never said it was delayed. <laughs> My God. Uh, All right. Um, oh, Sega. Hey, Nolan. What's up? So you finished Persona 3, huh? I did something you did, that you... no one else on this site has done. Oh, yeah? Well, Nick finished three Final Fantasy 13 games. It, what are it, these noises you're making, Carlos? Huh? Anyway, me. Uh, I finished uh, Persona Three. F- it only, yes, it only took you congratulations eight years. Eight years. I started. I started playing Persona Three on January eighth, two thousand nine, and I finished it on. Were you playing the same save? No, oh. that save file got corrupted. Oh, I had to restart. that would have been truly impressive. <laughs> yeah, and so I and then I finished it on October. Sorry, not October. November. What was it I, on Sunday? So eleventh. Mm-hmm. Something uh, like that. 2016, so just under eight years. Why did the, it take you so long? The entire Obama presidency. So thanks, Obama. I, don't, I mean, is it possible? I mean, you can't have like loved the game, right? Why because not? if you loved it, you would have finished so I, it I a lot sooner. It, I started it in 2009, and I loved it, and I played the shit out of it. But then I uh, my save file got corrupted, and so I stopped playing it for a while. Yeah. Because my save file got corrupted. I was I was like You played a majority of the game. I was like sixty recently, hours right? into the game when my save file got corrupted. Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't like five hours in. I played over half the game. I had played over twenty hours of Persona Four on Nolan's PS two. Yeah. And then we and then we stopped living together and then I had to play it and I was like, Well if I'm gonna emulate it, I have to start the whole game over. So yeah. So yeah, so, so no, I, de- I definitely enjoyed the shit out of the game, but like I said, it's kind of a it's disheartening when you lose 60 hours of progress in a 70 or 80 hour game. Uh, and so I finally picked it back up because it went on sale on PSN or something. And so I got a digital copy of it. Um, and so I started replaying it, I think, a year and a half ago. Uh, and it's just, you know, fucking everyone's busy. You know, other games got in the way. But then I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to finish this game because Persona 5 is a thing. 
Um, and or so just bought yourself some more time too. Well, yeah. Uh, so I started playing the shit out of it, and I finally got around to beating it. And you know what? This game is fantastic. It has a lot of issues. <laughs> And it's one of those things where I know it's an old game. I don't know when Persona 3 first came out. I would, like, maybe 2007? I don't know, it's a pretty old game, and it definitely has issues. And, and it's kind of one of the situations where, you know, I was, um... I was talking with, you know, the chat and community about it as I was playing it. I'm like, man, this sucks. And they're like, don't worry, they fixed that in Persona 4. And I'm like, man, this sucks. And they're like, don't worry, they fixed that in Persona 4. I'm like, well, stop telling me that, because that doesn't change the fact that it's still broken here. Well, that's funny, because there's a lot of things in, that when I was playing Persona 4, I was like, God, I, I, don't, I don't like that. And uh -huh. I'm just hoping, I'm hoping... They fix it in Persona 5. They fix it in Persona 5. Yeah. And it's not even fixing, yeah. it's just... This I, series... Things I hope they do This series kind of, in some ways, has its head up its butthole. Uh, like, for example, when Persona 4 launched, I mean, like, so you're playing Persona 4 Gold. I'm playing Gold, right? Correct. Like, that made some improvements over Persona 4. Yes. That they had fixed when they did the PSP version of Persona, Persona 3, 3. Yes. That, it, so, like, Persona 5's coming out, mm -hmm. and I heard you can't choose the skills that you inherit when you fuse Personas. Uh, that sucks. And it's like... That was in this game, and it was in this Persona game, and it was so in this it, Shin Megami Tensei game. Why are you taking that out again? Just so you can do a golden version of this, where you put it back in? Why? Yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. I don't. That is kind of silly. Get it? Because that was an issue with three. Three yeah. didn't have that. Four did, but apparently five doesn't. Yeah, that is a step backwards. Yeah, okay. uh, but yeah, no. So I mean, I, I talked about it a little bit last week on the show. But yeah, just like little complaints I had with three. Uh, you know, not being able to control your AI, your, yeah. your other characters in battle, which is very frustrating because it could fuck you over. And, you know, a big component of this game is knocking down, having every enemy at the same time knocked down so you yeah. can do an all-out attack. But the problem is there were several times in the previous game where your AI companion had a skill that would knock down the last standing opponent uh, enemy, but instead they would just attack the enemy that's already laying down and kind of like fuck you over. And then uh, the other thing was, so you, to, in order to prevent that, you would say, okay, try to, you would tell them to try and knock down an enemy. But if they couldn't, they would do nothing. Like you can still attack, if you can't knock them down, don't not help. Yeah. You know, if they're standing and you hit them, it's not gonna knock them down, so but at least only, it'll do damage. You're only making decisions, like decisions, like combat decisions for your one. In Persona main. 3, yes, you can tell them Hey, I want you to act freely. I want you to heal, heal or support us. Yeah. The problem with heal support is if anybody has two points of damage to them, they will fucking heal them instead of attacking the enemy. And then if like four, like you have four people on your team and if each of them have 10% health missing and one person has 20%, instead of doing a heal all uh, um, ability, they'll do the heal one on like that one guy who has a little bit less health. And it's just like so silly. Um. Uh, but uh, how was the final boss? Did you accidentally heal it for full health? Uh, no, you can heal it for full health. I, I well, I, I watched a classic DSP video where he rage quit the final boss of Persona 3 because he kept the boss kept charming one of his characters that did a full heal on the boss, oh. and it happened to him twice. And he was like, Fuck this game. Well, that's kind of that's your own fault for bringing in, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, well, DSP sucks, yeah. So. Uh, so, so going into that. Uh, I, I knew that the final boss was hard. Uh, I talked about it with uh, uh, Vunik. No, Vunik? Yeah, Vunik was who I was talking with about. Um, he was saying it took him like 45 minutes for the boss battle. Jeez. Uh, and, but he was only like, he told me he was level like 70 or something like that. Was that the overworld? Yeah, that's the overworld. It's Man, very that simple. Looks, that looks way different than Persona 4. Though. Oh, that's also, it's also nighttime. So you can only go to two places at nighttime. Yeah. Uh, during the day, you can go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. You know the reality? I've played a lot of Persona and Shin Megami Tensei games. Mm -hmm. Like, the gameplay systems always seem a little problematic. Like, like I, I feel like in none of those games, the gameplay is the highlight. It's always the atmosphere or the writing I think it's the or the characters. <laughs> that can like, cause I, an issue. I, I, like, I really do. <laughs> He's thinking of Jade Empire over yeah. here. Isn't it, it's true. It's very, it's very rigid. Like, the, like the, the the decisions you have to make are so binary for like just hanging out or deciding what you're gonna do after school. Like, you only yeah. have time to do this or this. And once you make that decision, that's your day. That's it. You're yeah. done. And instead, and which can be frustrating, especially because there are certain things you can do that won't take up the whole day. 
-hmm. like uh, going to stores, doing this, uh, some like, uh, I don't want to say fetch quest, but yeah, but some like, uh, you know, quest that you can do in the game. And you have to remember, I need to do that before I do this, because I, can, I can't do both, or you can do both, but you have to do it in the right order. I'm just... as. as I've learned to not give a shit about any of that stuff, which is kind of what but I was so frustrated and obsessive when I first started Persona 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. And and it was one of the reasons why I just really bounced off these games. Everyone was telling me, you know what, just don't worry about it. None of it matters. But anyway, what I wanted it, to say about 3... And ev eventually I just gave up. ...was uh, there? there's an extra, like, dungeon you can unlock Yeah. Uh, with super high-level enemies... But since you can still always, if you know the ability they're weak against, you can knock them down and do all out attacks, and it makes it a lot easier. Um, yeah, to get that, you have to kill the Reaper, which is like a super powerful enemy. Uh, which early on in the game, you know, you're fucked if he catches you because he does yeah. so much damage. Uh, but later on in the game, like I, I, I learned an ability that kind of made him easy. I kind of, yeah. I kind of griefed him a bit. Uh, I found that online, so it made it easy to beat him. Um, and so you unlock this, like, extra dungeon, and in here you get so much experience. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, I... I but is this post-final boss? No, this is pre-final boss. Is this the fest shit? What? Is this the fest shit? Fest? Yeah, no. is this what F makes the it... F-E-S. Oh, yes, yeah, this is F-E-S. Fest. Yeah, correct. Okay. This is an F-E-S thing. Um, but, yeah, so there are some enemies in this where if you, you know, you de defeat them... Uh, you get the shuffle time, and then you get, like, the extra experience. You'll get, like, 32,000 experience, which will fucking, like, level up any character. It makes leveling up your persona really quick. Um, and so I spent maybe, like, th two hours in this area, and I went from level 70 to, like, level 90. Nice. Or something like that. So the final boss, while not, like, a breeze... It still took me like half an hour to, to yeah. beat him. Mm. Uh, was still uh, it made it a lot easier, I guess, on me. And the the main reason I spent time in here was not leveling up my own character. It was leveling up personas to teach them new abilities because some of the later personas don't get later or like higher abilities until they hit. And it honestly wasn't even for me. It was for my AI companions uh, because a lot of them like oh they learn this ability but not until this level. And it's like it's really frustrating that they don't know this yet. Yeah. Uh, like a fucking heal all spell. Um, but anyway, and so the, so uh, I beat it. Uh, cool. Music's fucking fantastic. Yep. I, I I listened to the soundtrack the past couple of days uh, just over and over again because uh, I love it. Uh, one of the great things about the end of this game, when you beat the final boss, you get to go around and talk to every social link person as like a closure thing. Oh, that's cool. Like you get to you you know, and some people Wrap who moved away. Lines. Like, there's someone else where they normally are who's like, hey, are you this kid? That, this person sent this letter. Here's this letter. from, And so you there's the, almost like closure to everything. And I That was one of the reasons I love the end of Lunar so much. And, and that, yeah, well, that's it. Like, any RPG where you spend, in this case, like, like 75 hours, whatever, getting to know these characters and stuff, and, like, having the ability to kind of have that closure at the end of the yeah. game is kind of cool. Who's your waifu? Um, well, I fucked all of them. Really? Yes. King? Yes. Just the, fucking even, in this game? Oh, the, yes. Even the robot chick? Is it like uh, no, game? she's the only one I didn't. Okay, she's the only well, one I, I didn't max out her And there's link. robot chicks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing this tomorrow. Uh, but Yukari was my, my waifu, though. That's, that sounds very reminiscent of Yukiko. Uh, a little bit. There is yeah. There's a lot of... Sounds like... Going sound from Persona to Persona, there's like, oh, it's the... It's this character. It sounds like you know, Nolan did the Yuki challenge in Persona 3. Who, who, who's like your buddy with the cap? Uh, Junpei. Junpei. Or yeah. they call him Stupei. There's a Junpei in Persona 4. Yeah, I know. I've, so I'm uh, so, and that's what I wanted to kind of lead into is I played a lot of Persona 3 in the past, you know, year and a half, whatever. I finally finished it. And so before Persona 5 comes out, I was like, I'm gonna beat Persona 4. Uh, and so as of like yesterday, I am seven hours into Persona 4. So I'm like, I don't know, halfway through the tutorial. Um, and I'm enjoying it. There, there are definitely issues though that I'm having with this yeah. game. You don't shoot yourself fuck? in the head. That's one. Yeah, you don't shoot yourself in the head. Um, what did that do? What? It summons I swear persona. to God, we've talked about these games a lot over the years. But uh -huh. you never. And I'm attention. watching. Oh God! And I'm watching footage of it right now, and I still have no fucking clue what this is. So, so here, let's do, like, let's do a, a brief, but, uh, just quickly, just like like that? one minute persona. So Persona, and at least in Persona 3, uh, there are certain people who are Persona users. 
which means they have access to a persona, which Monsters. is a, a person that is a, a It's like their inner Pokemon, okay? Kind of, that comes out during the dark hour is what is in this game. And to activate it, they need a... Gun. Tr trigger. That they, they there's, there's a invoker. Turn. Invoker, thank a you. psychopath. And in this case, their invoker is a gun. So yes, they shoot themselves in the head during the dark hour. They can't just do this whenever they want. It has to be during the specific time when anybody who is not a persona user, it's turned into like a coffin. It's like a, it's like an hour. It's like a, a time that doesn't exist. That for everyone else, it goes by in an instant. But if you are a persona user, you have access to this time. Chris, anyway, this sounds like it's right up your alley. What are you talking about? I know, about? but this it's, is it's so, cool. like, some weird time. But then shit. it's all just like Japanese high school kids going on dates and yeah. hanging out at the mall. Kind That's the, the charm. Like yeah. what the fuck That's is the that? That's the charm. In, in Persona Why 4, don't you want to do that? In Persona 4, instead of shooting yourself in the head, you crawl through a TV. Yeah, you go into a TV screen. But anyway, so maybe a little less. Let, cool. let's, let's talk about a four little, real quick. A little less risque. <clears throat> so, I've been having a couple of issues with four. So I will say they did fix a lot of problems. Uh, you know the uh, how how you interact with uh, your other characters in battle. You can't have them be AI controlled, or you can control everything they do. That's great. Uh, they changed how like the shuffle time works. Yeah. So now you can get more than one card. You can get all of the cards, which is pretty cool. That's uh, the de that's the most satisfying gameplay in Persona Four. Getting the shuffle bonus. Yes. Yes. A huge fucking issue I have found so far is that when you're exploring these dungeons, there's no way to like restore your health and SP. Like in Persona Three, if you were in the Tartarus, like the dungeon, if you go back to the beginning. All your health and SP is restored, and then you can continue exploring. But yeah. in, in Persona Four, you have to use items. The problem is, all of the items are few and far between. Uh, the only place you can buy them in the real world, uh, you can only buy f like five a week. Yeah, and they only heal you ten SP each. Yeah, but but the like, di the difference, Nolan, is that is that it's done. This is less grindy. I know this game is less. Well, grindy no, no, no. Than... It's done that way because you could. Go through an entire dungeon in one night. While in Persona Three, you get tired and you'd eventually pass out. You don't pass out in this game. So, uh, but you run out of SP. I know that's how they limit you. Yeah. It, it, but if you're smarter with that stuff, and you do eventually get ways to restore that. I know shit, someone told me that you, you, can, you get can a social go longer. Link. Yeah. You can go longer. Yeah, I understand. But it's just that's been a big frustrating fact for me is that in early it's, on it's in the game, similar in Persona Five, I believe. Okay. And early on in the game, I wanted to do a little bit of grinding. I wanted to uh, do some stuff. I want to unlock some new personas and then fuse them before I got to this big boss I knew was coming up. But I just kept fucking running out of SP, and it was really frustrating because. Because being a Persona game, uh, I don't want to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. I wanted to fucking hang out with somebody instead of coming here. Yeah, I like but... spending a little bit of time in the combat place and spending more time in the in the. Are you the world. kind of person who wants to max out as many social links as possible? Yes. Because see, I, I've I've played a bunch of this game or four, and I I I have not. Carlos, that's not necessary. I just, I just, you, you kind of gave up on it, or you're just kind of doing whatever. I just don't see the point Be, yeah. because, like, like, like the well, gameplay ramifications of like maxing out a social link aren't really that big of a deal, mm -hmm. you know. Like, Persona is not really challenging outside of like random cheap shit that that just happens to kill you because of a dice roll or like bosses that just have too many too many hit points, and yeah. that's why they can be challenging. Um, I've, I've never felt like the bonus I get while fusing a persona it's was so so amazing because I had one higher like social link or two higher social links. It just it doesn't matter all that much. I mean, I mean, do, do the stories that seem interesting to you, and beyond that, I don't think it really matters. Otherwise, you you either min max it or you don't. Yeah. And min maxing isn't worth it. I feel like. I don't know. Okay. Uh, another big issue I have with this game is, like Nick was saying earlier, he played it when we lived together. He played his copy of the game on my PS2, and I watched mm -hmm. him a little bit, not a whole lot, mm -hmm. uh, but I remember him doing the Chie Challenge, right? Didn't well, he? I was... What is doing the Chie Challenge? Challenge? Oh, you were doing the Yuki, Yuki Challenge? challenge. Oh, okay, sorry, uh, you were doing the Yuki right, Challenge. Right. Yuki, I was doing the Chie yeah, for some reason. Yukiko was the, uh, the shy... Uh, uh, daughter of the maybe, innkeeper. Yeah. Daughter of the innkeeper. She's kind of reserved. Chie. Chie yeah. uh, is... So let's talk about Chie real quick. Why don't... I remember watching Nick play it, and she was like, okay, cool, whatever, Chie, she seems like, all right, I can see why some people might like this character. And then I start playing my game, and I'm like, 
The why voice, the voice why do I different. not like her as much? Oh my god, the voice actress is horrible. And I, I pulled up YouTube clips comparing them. It that is really ridiculously does, bad in comparison. It's like the vo first voice actress, they're like, oh, Reed is a female character in a game. And she's like, oh, hello, my name is Chie, blah, 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 blah. Was and it my, second, drag, my, my copy of yes, the Dragon oh Kick? Oh my fucking god, that shit. Everyone watches that fucking clip and it's a big deal, but I'm telling you... Dude, like it's forty it's, hours in, eighty hours in. It's not, but she's just Chie is like, gonna be your Chie, and it, you're not gonna care about the other But this voice actress just goes so over the fucking top. It's Everyone, annoying. I mean, that's her character, though. But I mean, she wasn't like that persona uh, for I mean, like base one, not golden. I, thought I don't know. I just think the the voice actor, voice actress is. I, bad. I thought I remember people telling me that the the Chie in Golden was the one that well, other no, way fans no, prefer. No, 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 or no. Not, I mean, it's very. It's very divided. Some people prefer golden. Some people prefer. Well, the people who prefer them. golden are wrong. <laughs> so I mean. But it is divided. Yeah. Divided into right and wrong. But like, when I watched that clip, I was like, I think I do like the one from the original. And when I first played the game, I played the original. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, now that I'm sixty-five hours into Persona Five. There's only Persona one five, really. Persona four. There's yeah. only one Chie to me. No, so. I, I understand. I understand. And, and and it's yes, it's not gonna break the game for me. I'm not gonna stop playing because of that. It's just it's just frustrating because I like I said I the, for some reason this Chie just kind of irks me. Like whenever she fucking speaks, it, I'm not a fan of it. Maybe you don't like her personality type. Maybe you want a quiet woman who knows her place. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, on that note, yeah. I think it's time to take a break. I yeah. fucked Chie, I think. I don't know. I th you sure <laughs> I don't you, remember. You sure you fucked girls in Persona 4? Three? Three. Oh, no, it, you all, it all but says, let's fuck. It's like, oh, you know, can we can we spend I, time together? I didn't together? even get far enough in the game to reach that point. It's when you max out their social link, and you, you haven't, like, like, you're not in a bad position with them. Like they don't hate you for going out with some other girl, like two timing yeah. them. I think uh, I bone she. And you, you go. They, they always invite you to their room, and they're like, "Oh, I wanted to spend this special evening with you." And then they blush, and then blah blah blah, and then it fades to black, and it's like, "Oh, you spent the night." Blah blah. blah. It's but, like but these fucking. I've talked no, about no, this no, before. No, no. It frustrates no, no, no. the fuck out of me. They probably did like origami or something cute oh, no, because no, 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 no one no. has sex in any of these games, and it doesn't make no, sense. No, 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 no. Go just fucking YouTube. The, the actual, like, videos of that and the aftermath and the conversations you will have with them Wait, afterwards. why do you think they didn't have sex? You fuck them. Because in JRPGs, no one ever has sex, and it's so frustrating because mm. everyone's wearing skipping clothing, skippy clothing, you know. These are young people who you know would want to fuck, but and no one ever fucks. No, they do. Oh, well, they do. maybe in Persona 3. They do in Persona 3. I, I think maybe I did in 4. I don't know. But it's 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 a rarity. Like that's not very common. People don't have sex. Like people. I mean, like look people at people have sex all the time. People look at like Sinran Kagura. Like all those girls should be fucking. No one fucks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, one uh, one one more. Oh, shit, I just had it. Oh yeah, Persona Three. As I was doing the the one of the great things about that game, or not great. One of the social links is an online interaction with someone you play an MMO with. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. And you have this relationship, but you never see them because it's just online. Yeah. Uh, and the very last day of the game, you find that person in real life. And that scene is fantastic. Just when they realize who you are and you realize who they are. Oh, my it's God. Magical. Like, I, I am so glad. Because the thing is, I almost missed that scene because you had to go into somewhere. I, you, I don't, you'd never really go in the game. Uh, and it was a fantastic uh, like That's the end of Persona 3. Of Persona 3, yeah. At the very last day of Persona 3. Cool, cool. So well, I disagree with what Clef said. Just because you have sex doesn't make, mean it's in a fucking adult game. I'm not saying you have to do the sex. Yeah. I just want... This isn't hot These coffee people here. to bone because that's what people do when they look that fucking sexy. And you know what? Like all these, all the dudes look handsome and all the chicks look hot. They'd be boning happening, man. You tell Is us that how that works? works? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Put attractive people in a room together. Eventually, they just start. I mean, Run copulating. Shakespeare. Stop no. copying. What are copulating. we waiting for? When they're young, <laughs> <Right>. Shakespeare. <laughs> Carlos waits an hour to like. That's his gun. When they're young, they do. Now's the time. Oh my God! All right, we need to take a quick break. Yep. And when we come back. We have some stuff. We have some news to talk about. There's some Nintendo news uh, worth discussing. Nothing mm. happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll answer some Patreon questions, of course. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back after this short break.
girls doing? Alright, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Played some Forbidden Island last night. It's pretty good. You played some what last night, Nolan? Forbidden Island. What is that? A board game. Oh. It's not a video game. It's a little pandemic-y. Yeah, it's very much like pan- Well, the reason we played it, and I hope Bernadette's not watching this, and I love her. With all lot. my heart. Because <laughs> uh, we've been playing this other game called Quirkle. And it's kind of like dominoes, where you have everyone, you have like a set number of tiles in front of you, and you kind of match them up, and you get yeah. points and stuff, and we've played that twice, and I've beaten her by a lot of points both times. And I could tell she got upset by it, and I was like, I, like, you can't get upset because it's, it's a game. It's not like I'm out to get you. I just happen to do better in this and instance. The, and Bernadette, we all feel that way about Nolan. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> so anyway, so she was like... <laughs> I like, think it was because you ended the game with na 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 na. I'm better than you. Not well, the, not not. I didn't have to, oh. because I, I like I said I beat her by like a lot of points, and it's not. But like did I, you do one of these? No. Okay. I was just like, hey, the game's over, and and then like my she, face, you just, asshole. My face just naturally made this face, and and oh. so like I I felt bad, and it's like I'm not gonna throw the game. I I would feel like an ass if she won because I did a bunch of dumb things to. You know what I'm saying? And so I was, she, I was like, let's play Forbidden Island. It's a game where we're playing against the game. So we're literally playing together. Cooperatively. Exactly. Just, what we do. Like a marriage. Yeah, exactly. Some might say. Yeah. Marriage. But anyway. Yes. Video game. Played some Forbidden Island. Last Should time. I buy Watch Dogs 2? Well, I have okay. What I'll does your phone that, tell you? I will answer that question. For we are you. recording and having a conversation I will, over here, crispy. Hey, this is this is video game related. I will answer about that question. About Forbidden Island, which I've never played. I crispy, can't contribute anything to that conversation. Crispy, I'll give you a definitive answer to that question if you can. Fuck answer you, this. Brad. You're interrupting me. I will give you a definitive answer to that question if you can answer it for me. This. Okay. Should I buy Pokemon Sun or Moon? Yes. Then yes, you should buy Watch Dogs too. Uh, just feeding back my answer, I just said something to get your answer. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer both of like y'all's it. questions. If you're asking yourself that question, just don't. is it in Redbox? No, it's That's not. That's what in I box. said earlier. It's Play not something in you have. Ubisoft is balls. Trust me, I will. What does that mean though? Ubisoft isn't putting anything in Redbox. Uh, yeah, no, they have. no, I've they seen do, Assassin's yeah. Creed they, games in Redbox. Done, I've they, gotten an Assassin's Creed. They did South Park and why is this one? Because they're just being. Why? Why is the PC release two weeks after the console release? Why did they put a vagina in their game? Yeah, and a dick. A great, uh, well, yeah, oh, they, and a dick. They put a dick and a vagina in the game, and they got pissed off when people. I want to see what a, I honestly want to see oh, what a Sony digital did, vagina I looks like. I saw it. It's but just really. It's not that high res. It's, no, I man, it just looks like a vagina. It just looks like. A but like, Nick, have you never like, seen a vagina? No, but like, <laughs> they like, took out the vagina, dick, but not the dick. A dick is easier, I would imagine, to. Easier render on the eyes. to render. Yes, Why exactly. is that easier? That's not true. There's more polygons. You have, you have to stuff. model the dick. Yeah. The vagina is like part of the texture map, probably. Physics. Yeah, that's hard. Okay, maybe I'm okay. I've seen the dick and I've seen the vagina, and the dick is like got some jiggle to it. <laughs> so the I mean, vagina okay. doesn't. No. <laughs> well, that's probably good. Okay. The vagina was also <laughs> video game. But I like how they removed the vagina, but left in the the peeners. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. It's so weird. Sony didn't like people sharing vaginas. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. I don't. I don't think they work. I don't think they're for whatever reason they're not accustomed to doing. I, we haven't had nearly enough vaginas in this industry yet. You're right. In you the actual, in the actual games. games. In the Modded actual games. Wait, what about that game Cave Story? Not a vagina. Just, yeah, no. That's, I see where you're going. It, no, not that. quite. I see where you're going. Anyways, um, Crispy, did you did you play anything? I forgot to ask you. Did, no, I don't you, play video games anymore. You, <laughs> you borrowed the PlayStation VR. Did you play Batman? No, I don't have. I don't have VR remotes or the money to buy. Oh, Batman. you have to have the Move controllers to play. What that, the don't fuck you? did you play? Uh, a lot of that uh, demo disc. Rush of Blood. Oh yeah. Mm. Tried out the demo disc. Yeah, mostly like I I. Played Did it you like the 30-second first... E-Valkyrie demo? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that was really infuriating. It's not even as cool as the one that I played at the Oculus booth. Mm. Um, and the fucking... I played the uh, the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare 
what's it called like something experience the raptor experience where you fly the space plane around the space space plane that is so stupid that was so fucking dumb that was just bad um Mm. it it lasted i I tried that demo for drive club by the way driving a car yeah no it was weird I thought it was pretty cool. Hmm. It was that weird. Drive Club VR got horrific. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Drive though. Club is probably not the best yeah. racing all, game, yeah. but just forgetting the feel of what it's like to drive to play a racing game while you're in a car and you're looking around like the interior of the car. And I, I was looking like I, I, I was sitting here driving. And I was like, "What's the button to look in the rearview mirror?" And I was like, "What the fuck am I doing?" And I just looked up and I was looking in the actual mirror. Like that, that was kind of a cool experience. You could look at the rear, like the the side mirrors too, and like. I don't know. It was just cool. No, so you like, could do that. Like a car came, a car. a car. Like we were doing a race, and a car came next to me, and I was just like flicking, like actually flicking off the car. Like this is, this is fucking weird. It feels weird, but I would love to see an actual like racing game that does like well. I don't know how that game is going to turn yeah. out, but mm-hmm. I would love to play Not like. Good, it's out. I would it love to play bad, like uh, like a Gran Turismo or something in it. That'd mm-hmm. be pretty cool. Or burnout. Or, or burnout. Need for burnout speed. Would be, oh, would be cool. uh, the Super Hypercube <clears throat> demo was really cool. The, wait, what was it? Super Hypercube? I didn't didn't play you that need one. a move controller to do that? No. Don't you you need a move controller to play the uh works job simulator? Yeah, I want uh, I, yeah. I was like gonna buy job simulator. Job simulator like, but, seems like a pretty fun game. But you need I heard it doesn't work well on PSVR though. Really? Yeah, it's a Steam there's game. There's some tracking it? issues. Hmm. Wait, it's it's only a VR hmm. game. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. I really wanted to try Did you do game. Headmaster? Yeah, that's pretty cool. The, right? the demo for Headmaster was like just fun and like quirky enough that like I also it's like Portal or something. I also really considered buying that as yeah. well. Like it, it's it's really cool because the demo for Headmaster is like you on a soccer field in the middle of the night and it looks like you're in a prison camp and they just like will turn on spotlights and there will be like new settings and equipment around you and it's just like an automated recording like telling you like now we're going to work on head exercises and they just have like machines that are shooting soccer balls at you and you got to hit him with your head nice. it's, it, it it's it has a surprise like i didn't think presentation is cool. yeah the presentation is what's so amazing about it like i didn't think that like a game about hitting soccer balls with your head could be any fun at all but it turns but, out but it, it turns out i was really into it and i played that uh here they lie demo which... by the way how am i gonna f- am i ever gonna be able to finish here they lie i got to the like, the very end of the game on brad's ps4 just finish it over here do the yeah, I'll just. I think I'm gonna buy my own PlayStation VR because at this point I'm already getting sick of putting it in a box and moving it around. Yeah, put it in a bag. Don't put it in the fucking yeah, box. Just put it in the bag. Why oh do you God. need to put it in a box? <laughs> Fine. It's just, not Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Yeah, you don't have to pack it up. <laughs> factory. It's just when am I gonna get down here to fucking play it? Before a podcast. That's yeah. not really feasible. after a podcast. Not really feasible for me. Probably not going to happen. I considered buying it again and playing it again because I want to finish it before the end of the year. But it's ridiculous. Whatever. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the news. There's plenty of stuff in the news. There's a lot of Nintendo Switch stuff. Or not a lot, but so the Nintendo announced they're going to be doing a event uh, on January 12th. Yep. Where they're going to announce more details of the Switch. What What information are we hoping to get confirmed in January? Uh, mainly stuff about the next news topic. <laughs> Uh, I mean, oh, okay. uh, what's what's going to come in the box? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, information about you know how the prices on controllers and you know, battery peripherals, life. battery life, any, anything like that. You know, there's just essentially more words. Yeah, that's word. what we're hoping to hear because the, everything we've seen about the Nintendo Switch so far has just been uh, just moving pictures. Yeah, like no one's actually of, fucking said anything. A lot of happy people doing nothing. Yeah, exactly. A lot of happy people doing nothing. A lot of rumors and. Sources now, and uh, now fakes. there is there is a rumored launch price which I thought was rather interesting. Yeah, and I think it's bullshit. Wh- why? Because you're very wrong from your assumptions. Well, we'll is that why you think it's bullshit? So for, it's come from a different, a couple of different places. Well, I, think, I think Toys R Us in Canada or something posted a page on accident. And it accidentally went live, and then a couple other like sources came out with. What? Fuck you. <laughs> What did you think <laughs> it was you, gonna dude. Be? You thought it was going to be like four hundred dollars or something like that. I think. Well, I thought you know, th- no one's budging from their 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 guesses yeah. thus far. But if it's two hundred fifty dollars, that's really a pleasant surprise. 
So anyway, dude, I mean, the next bit of news is that it is rumored that there will be a base model of the Switch that is two hundred and fifty dollars. What if it's two hundred and fifty, but it doesn't come with the fucking pad? Dude, what if? Yeah. What if they've been <laughs> they've already been towing down that road already with the fucking new 3ds XL, where they sell it for two hundred dollars, but they don't give you an AC adapter with that price? Well, the, the, the like, there, there's a two hundred and fifty, there's two fifty, and then there's a three hundred dollar version that comes with uh, a game. Well, I. At the very least, the 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 most base thing that they could do would be just the pad with the little Joy Cons. Yeah, and like for two hundred fifty dollars, I mean, that's what the Vita launched at. That's what the three DS launched at. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe oh, not and the also 3DS. the, the, like, like the th- that's what the more I mean, expensive one has a larger. Apparently, they said like more memory. So what the, whatever, whatever one what the PSP launched at actually, yeah. like 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 that's if if if. That thing comes out in March for two hundred fifty dollars, and it launches with the new Mario game. Which, by the way, there's rumors that 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 Mario game is so far along. Hey, it that's might what be I, ready. that's what I said. I said, what if they launch it? With, isn't that what I said the first time we talked about this? I said, what if they launch well, a system with a game? That, well, no, no, I don't, also, I don't mean it's going to come with it, but I'm saying like if if that game is ready for launch, yeah. like that's like I I'm excited about that. You know, like like. I have some- and, 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 and hey, y'all know my thoughts on the PlayStation 4 Pro and stuff, and that's fine. But like, like four hundred dollars for a system that plays the same games a little bit better. I mean, especially if you have a nice TV, versus like two hundred fifty for like a brand new thing that's playing new Mario games and stuff. Like, that's super a super that compelling. Sounds like a great fucking deal, which yeah. is why I don't think it's gonna happen. Well, the the it was it was game like uh, the GameStop of. Canada Europe, uh, of of Canada and Europe or whatever posted the two prices of of the one ninety nine pounds and the two forty nine pounds, mm-hmm. well, which I think is like two fifty three hundred. Uh, and that crossed. is like like that's what Nintendo needs to launch at. Yeah. Remember that Wii U launched at three fifty, and that's the reason mm-hmm. it it died quick. My right? con- my concern or it never if, lived. My concern if it launches at two fifty though is what if it's like poor quality, like in terms of like. The materials it's made out of and oh, like what fragility of it. Is always oh, yeah, good with stuff mo- like that. I don't think man. they've ever put out anything that's been bad yeah. quality. And, and and you know you can't say it's not that powerful because it is that new Zelda game in your hands at the very least, and that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So Which, it, by the way, there's also rumors that Zelda's not going to make it. Uh, yes, at true. Which you know sucks. <laughs> It'd be nice if it made Wii U. I don't think that that is really an indication of anything. But in lieu of having another half an hour argument, let's move on. Okay, we can. We'll talk about this more on January. 12th. Yeah, in January we'll we'll talk about it plenty uh, when we have more information here. Um, let's see what uh, Persona Five, which we mentioned in mm-hmm. the first segment when we we're talking about Persona Three and Four, has been delayed. Yay! Alpha Valentine's Day mm-hmm. coming out April fourth. Now there's right. a lot coming out in February already. Anyway. There is, dude. January, February, March already looks fucking crazy. <laughs> so so does was... November and December and January. I yeah. mean, yeah. every month besides like July. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much it's pretty much nonstop between now and July. So, like in 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 February, does Neo come out in February? Uh, as opposed yeah. to Neo, yeah. uh, Horizon Zero Dawn comes out in February. Yep, there's there's like a Res- lot of games. Resident Evil Seven still slated for January. 7. Yeah, um, no. there's 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 at least one more game in I March noticed in, mm-hmm. uh, in January. Yeah, there's I, I still think there's a good chance we could hear. The announcement of Bloodborne two at the Game Awards next or in is, a few oh my, weeks. Is the Game Awards a couple weeks? December first, right? I think uh, it's, it's early know, December. Um, which kind of leads me into my next news topic here, which is looks like we're probably so Remedy, mm-hmm. this studio obviously behind Max Payne, Alan Wake, Quantum Break, uh, released a silly teaser trailer today for a game trailer, mm-hmm. saying they're going to be announcing a new game soon. They didn't say when. It was a really weird, crazy looking trailer. It was just um, Sam Lake. Is that his, that's his name, right? Sam yeah, Lake, so, yeah. um, just making all kinds of weird faces with weird music in the background and some <laughs> goofy looking explosions. Um, but it says new game announcement soon. Which at this point in time, if anyone says that, it makes me assume that it's going to be an announcement at the VGAs. I'll tell you what, it's not going to be. Yeah, it's not going to be a sequel to that Time Cop game. <laughs> Time Cop. The fucking Quantum Break. Yeah. Quantum Break. It's definitely not going to be Well, first of all, it's not going to be a sequel to Quantum Break because that game literally just came out this year. Why would we have a sequel to it? You're silly. Two, the way you said that, I hope does not... Wait, you think it's coming out... I mean, no one's saying that the game's coming out this year. 
Or did they say that? No. no. Why would you, why would they make an announcement in this for a sequel in the same year the original game came out? Like that is that wouldn't happen. Usually it's a little while longer. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> I hope that time cop thing wasn't meant to be a a quip. That game was great. <laughs> I mean, I just don't never remember the name. That's all. Quantum Break. He's a time cop. Well, I don't think it's gonna be Max Payne. No. Nope. I don't think it's realistically gonna be Alan Wake too. Could be. Which. Could be, but like if you look at the trailer, like the trailer's goofy as hell. I don't, I, mm. I don't know if that's supposed to be tied in any way to teasing what the actual game. Yeah, I would going assume to be. the tone would probably match the game. Um, I'm not even entirely sure. What, yeah, what if like, they make Time is... Knife, which is the, which is the 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 goofy. Mm. Uh, remember, crispy the screenplay that you could read in Quantum Break, and that yeah. that's what people were saying about you know Staff. Alan Wake and then Night uh, Fall. Honestly, or whatever it's I could see them making Time Knife. As like a like a like a blood dragon type add on to Quantum Break. What? Hmm. Well, it could be fucking I don't, like, DLC. <laughs> what? Words, crispy. Use them. Mm. Words. How do they? Blow the thing up? with Time Knife is that it would only be worth it if there was an actual like time travel mechanic. And the way the time knife works is you just stab things and it goes <laughs> somewhere in time. I guess. Yeah. So I have a question. What the fuck kind of game would that be? <laughs> what if you stabbed yourself? I don't I, no, know. he does. That's oh. what he does. He stabs himself, <laughs> goes back in time, and then like <laughs> the bad guy shoots himself with a time gun or something at one point. Dude, I, I don't remember what the story's about. I remember there's a wedding and like people keep stabbing themselves and going back in time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was kind of the joke. I there's no fucking game. That's there. the only thing that there's that, no game. There. That is the only thing Sorry. that 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 Remedy has like created that would make that would match the tone of the trailer they released today. What here's a question. What would you say like Remedy's style? Does Remedy have a style? What are they good at? Third, like, like, like if Remedy announces a new game, what could we even expect? Third atmospheric story based third person shooter. That's what they do. Atmospheric story based. Story based. Story driven third person shooter. But mm-hmm. Max Payne is very different from Alan Wake is very different from But they're all break. third person shooters that have good stories that are uh good have stories. their own atmosphere. They, they each have their own like atmosphere, like their tone to it. Like, I don't know. That's broad. That's a broad stroke. Yeah. Perhaps. We'll see. But I we'll mean finish. they may they definitely specialize in third person shooters. Mm-hmm. Right? Specialize in the mean, polygon. They, they do three, them. They do them. The biggest games are third person shooters. The polygon article no, no, I'm, I'm about saying, the trailer says that the Finnish studio is known for making games that are a little weird. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. go. Well, well, but like, it's not like right. the third person shooter aspect is what's like amazing about these games. I mean, maybe for like Max Payne at the time, but I'm saying. They can do anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be a third-person game. It doesn't have to be a shooter. Like it'd be. Why nice. are we debating this? Well, I mean, because. Well, I mean, I'm interested. This is. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm in, why not I, talk about? I, I want to know what, what the fuck, fuck this else? is going to be. I love Remedy. Remedy is one of my favorite studios we'll these out. days. So. I'm curious as to where Remedy goes. I think, whatever they're good at, I don't think it has to be a third-person shooter to make something interesting. No, I'm just saying. But track record-wise. It's all been third-person shooters. Point is, we'll probably find out on the, during the VGAs. This, this looks very much like a teaser. Prepare yourself for the VGAs because we're going to announce some shit. By yeah, the way, let's not the, get our hopes up too much. Are we're, the VGAs this year going to be Jeff, like they were last year? Jeff Keighley threw shade at a little bit of himself, but also at No Man's Sky, or the announcement of No Man's Sky, saying, and, and he 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 references explicitly saying, "Hey, maybe I screwed up a little bit with that." Um, this year, there's going to be a lot more like gameplay and less like CGI. Hmm. So he's maybe announcing they're using it as a platform to announce games that are actually farther along in development. Well, I mean, I don't know, but or games you know, that are actually games. I, I don't know what it means, but but it's nice to know that you know <laughs> we we might see some fucking gameplay, which yeah. is what I always want to see. Definitely, because fuck CGI. Unless it's that Prey trailer, that one was cool. Prey was all right. The Prey, oh, Prey 2, 2. Oh, yeah. sorry. I thought you the new Prey one. Easy, buddy. Hey, but that new Prey no is... No one talked bad about the Prey that 2. That new Prey too. is Arcane, which yes. uh, playing Dishonored 2 right now is, is making me a little more optimistic about 
that prey game because Arcane does some cool shit. Mm-hmm. Um, last thing here we have is this uh, this new. I, I, who put the escape room on here? I don't know Not much. Me. I did about it. Uh, there is a uh, Nintendo. It's like an official Nintendo one, but it's a company that that kind of specializes in them. They've yeah. done other ones. Apparently, they did like a escape rooms. They yeah they they did a uh, a, 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 Z, a zero escape. What is that? Zero series? time dilemma. Z, that series of games. Nine nine nine. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, Virtue's mm-hmm. last reward. Zero escape. They did like one based on that, but they're doing an official Ninten- Nintendo Keep official going. Zelda escape room. Um, it's going to Houston, yeah. Houston, and a lot of other places, and it's sold out in a lot of cities. Not yet in Houston, um, but it's going to be in January, and they're going to be. I think they're going to be making more announcements about it soon. But if you if y'all want to go, if, if Anyone I, was, go, I said I think we should do a four it's four, player road it's trip. It's forty one dollars. The, the thing about escape rooms Damn. is like I want to do them. Malia wants to do them, but like you have to get a group of people who are all willing to like get organized and spend a lot of money because they're not cheap. Yeah. And in this case, it would be to travel as well. Yeah. So like it, escape rooms. But I wish but they were this, cheaper. But this room is limited to six people. Uh, well, your group is limited to six people. Yeah. So. But if you go with two people, you're probably just not going to do it, solve it, or you're going to be paired with random no, people. No, usually they won't let you go with too few people. They'll just prepare you with other which randos. Which sucks, too, because yeah. you might get someone who's, who's like shitty. a know-it-all yeah. or something, or who's shitty, and yeah. it could be bad. We have, we have six people that could, that could go, for sure. Point is, it's coming to Houston, so... You do. I'm saying we do it as a four-player group. What the fuck are you talking My about? My wife wants to go. Well, there's five of us here and your wife. <laughs> she doesn't like y'all. Oh, I'm just kidding. Fuck us. Okay. No, no, no. God damn Next it. Next subject. No, but sh- she would want maybe another woman to go or something. I mean, I don't know. Okay. We're a little nerdy and broy and Cool. So there's the three of us, Chris Davis, and we'll find two other people. <laughs> and then Brad can figure out how Well, I mean, I'm <laughs> saying like it's a it's a real struggle that we've had in the past. We need more like couple friends. I don't know. Or just friends in general. Yeah. <laughs> We got to just throw up middle fingers. <laughs> hey, it's not my fucking issue. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> just throwing shade. This is fucking weird. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about that because I think that would be awesome if we could find a way to do that. But that, that's going to be in Houston. Who knows if we'll get to go to it. But uh, I would say it's definitely a possibility. All right. Um, all right. Your middle finger is distracting. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's your turn. You no, taught no. him this. He learned it from watching you, I know. Dad. I know, but yeah, you're right. I did flick off Brad for like an entire 30 minute period. That was that was actually really hard to hold your middle finger up for that long. Um, Nolan, what up? I think it's time for the community. Time for what? The community. What 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 the community? <laughs> all right, guys, it's time for the community. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Favorite part of the show because it's all about you, our community, the people we love to be in the ears of. Uh, so, this week, no new patrons. It's okay. It's alright. We actually have some updates coming to the Patreon campaign very soon. Coming soon. We're, soon. we're working on some stuff. Uh, it is still November. It is. Which means our supporter of the month is Flight to Win. Uh, the game they chose is, well, the game we've been playing is Jade Empire. Crispy has played a pretty good chunk of it. He's loving it. It's and great Beyond Good and Evil was another one of his choices, which I also started last night. Which it sounds like he may be enjoying more than Jade Empire. Well, there you go. A little bit. Uh, so, how about we get to some questions from our patrons? Yeah, I love questions. Well, before we do that, because he brought up Jade Empire, I told him that I had mentioned that I thought Kojor was overrated in an old top five, where we did top five most overrated games. I downloaded that podcast. It was actually Nick who said that he thought KOTOR was an overrated series, and he brought up Jade Empire, saying that he liked the combat, and, and one of the reasons he didn't like KOTOR was the combat, <laughs> and that he liked it in Jade Empire more. And I laughed my ass off, because that's what I thought I said, but it was actually what Nick said, which, you know, I I also was, like, agreeing with you on that podcast, um, but I just thought that was funny, because I literally was just talking to Crispy about that, and I was like, I'm going to go find that podcast. And I downloaded it, I listened, and like Nick was saying all this stuff, and I was like... Don't let Crispy hear this, but yeah, it's funny. I, has anyone yet gone over to Crispy's and held the controller and see what what he was playing? Oh, uh, I mean, we he tried to get it running last night, but the frame rate was a wreck and oh. it just wasn't working out. Go All ahead, right, Nolan. questions 
from our patrons. Questions from our patrons. First question this week from Wendingo. Wendingo. Non-gaming related question here. Oh. I had a week-long vacation to Oregon planned at the end of November, but my friend canceled on me. I ain't got shit to do in DFW. That's Dallas, Fort Worth. For you non people. So, if I drive down to Austin, is there anything I should make sure I do? Dude, there's plenty. Dude, there's to do lots in to do in Austin. There's plenty um, to do in Austin. Lots of food. Lot, That's yeah. one thing I'll say. Lots of good food places. Do you like bars? <laughs> there's lots of good bars to we go do have, to. I don't know how old this person is. Um, he does not I, specify. I, I, do you like live I music and bars? When Dingo goes to sleep kind of early, so I assume he's not a kid. I, th- I, I, th- I think it depends on a lot of a lot of different things. Like. If you could ask every person on this couch what they'd recommend doing in Austin, I think we'd all give a slightly different answer. Probably. I would recommend live music and food trucks. Lots of good food trucks, lots of good live music. Why would we not recommend those things? I don't know. Nah, I was I was definitely going to recommend food trucks. There's lots of good food trucks. I was going to recommend live music and bars. Texas Chili Parlor is something I will always yeah. advertise to anybody who comes to Austin and wants to check out something local. They filmed that one movie there. Yeah, uh, they did. Uh, Planet Terror? The no, other the other one. Death Shit. Proof. There you go. Fuck Brad knows Planet Terror. Um, oh, God, come on. There's there's lots of stuff to do, guys. Come on, help no, me out oh, here. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were waiting for me. So there's, there's Do you some, like drinking beers? There's some pretty good museums. Uh, the Blanton's pretty good. Uh, there's a, the, um, what's the, the, uh, what is the one with the IMAX one? Bob Bullock. Bob, Bob Bullock. Bullock. Has some cool stuff. The capital of fucking Texas. That's capital. pretty. You can just walk around the Capitol building. It's pretty cool. Go uh, jogging up Congress. It's a great view. Uh, Bart, uh, Barton Springs. It's November. Probably don't want to yeah. go there now. Oh, actually, you know what? It's fucking fucking seventy today. You might want to go to Barton Springs. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, the bats have already migrated south to Mexico, yeah, the, so they're uh, gone. The green belt. Is a cool place to go, but again, it's November. It may not be the best weather for that uh, kind of Peter, outing. But Peter Pan putt putt. Yeah. Putt putt golf and it's BYOB. It's not oh, that bring big. beer and go play putt putt. Or... Brad, the point is you bring beer. That is why Peter Pan started letting you bring alcohol. It's because they realized they were not the best putt putt <laughs> golf. So they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Bring beer. Wait, but they are the best putt putt. The place is awesome. It's okay. What? It's, what? It's... No, I mean, it's, it, I mean, I don't think any putt putt is awesome. But that one's definitely not. You the... ever been the putt putt like in Florida, like in Orlando? <laughs> yeah, I did, and th- they have some That's great fucking shit, putt putt. It's far better than Peter Pan. But you can't you can't drink beer while you're walking around. Well, there you, you get sloshed before you go, man. Man, I guess so. Uh, Getting sloshed while playing Peter Pan still one of the top best, golf. best things. Top golf. Well, top golf isn't just in Austin. I don't. He might have one up. He's in DFW. I think there's a top golf in DFW. Um, just, are, are we calling that? You sound like you're saying a shoe store. Just say Dallas. He said it's DFW. the DFW Metroplex. He might man. not live in Dallas. Yeah, but he that's... might live in Weatherford. Yeah, but you know, I, I grew Mound. up in Sugarland, but I just told people Houston. Okay. Yeah, well, makes it easier. Anyway, because where the fuck is Sugarland? It's about thirty minutes south, uh, west of Houston. It's on the way to Victoria. I mean, it's touching. Oh, next it's question. Cool. All right. Uh, next question from Prince of the Universe. So it's getting close to the end of the year, and all there are, there are still two or three really big hitters yet to be released, my own personal game of the year was pretty much decided before I even finished it. So my question to you is, without naming it, of course, Mm. have you already decided what your game of the year is? If so, do you think it's better than your last game of the year? Um, I have a... I have a... I have a stand... I have a... Because Chris Davis has already put a deadline on our preliminary game of the year list. I have a preliminary game of the year. I have, I oh, have my... Those Chris Davis deadlines are so adorable. <laughs> I, know. I have a preliminary list Does put together. Is that to them? <laughs> it's not going to change. I mean, I mean, sorry. It is going to change dramatically. Um, but yes, I do have a game standing in as my game of the year right now. I don't anticipate that staying my game of the year. I'm going to guess next game of the year. Really? No, we're not naming names. No, I'm guessing it. Time cop. <laughs> Time knife. Why, why? Time knife. Game of the year. Just because he's a dude with a gun who travels through time, you assume he's a cop. Time balls. But he has the authority of he, a cop. Well, is he some sort of law enforcement? He's right? not anything. He's a dude who gets unstuck in time. It sounds to me like you should play that game. I did. I played the first chapter of it. And you weren't paying attention. No, I liked so, it. So Nick, what you're saying is, is one of the three we're games that is still to come out this year will probably be your game of the year. No, not necessarily. I just haven't given. 
I haven't looked okay. at my my list and thought about it long enough to really Far Cry sincerely. Primal. Nope. I heard I'm there kidding. was a vagina in Far Cry Primal too. Yeah. If there no, is, that was I just did, the main if there is, if there is, no, that vagina. was just a. Uh, I did not the, see the a surface of a pond where you could see your own reflection <laughs> through the TV screen. What? Oh, All right. Yeah, anyway, uh, I I I do have a tentative game of the year. Yes. Uh, will it change? Possibly. I don't know yet. Uh, like you said, there are two, three, or two or three big games still coming out. That hell, they could dethrone it. I don't know. I, there are. I think mine is pretty locked in, just from a hours perspective. No man's <laughs> <laughs> the great, the great crime, the horrible travesty that was No Man's Sky. I'm pretty sure his everyone, is everyone was was personally okay. offended and assaulted by No Man's Sky. <laughs> Hey, I never. I, I, think, never the, I think the. Mo- I think the interesting. Co- Has part- anyone finally murdered the guy who created it? Because come on. What's his name? Uh, if Sean, anyone deserves to be I'm sorry, I'm sorry. brutally the murdered, it's Sean that guy. Murray, the war criminal who made No Man's Sky. <laughs> oh my god, this is escalating. Did he move to Russia yet? Because fuck that guy. He hooked up with Snowden. Oh my god. I, right. I think the more interesting part of this question is is it better than my, your last game? No, of the year? it wasn't No Man's Sky. Which I'm looking at I'm looking Bye. at my tentative game of the year comparing it to my last my game of the year last year is Bloodborne. Mm-hmm. The game I that I tentatively my game of the year right now. Dark Souls you 3. Could not even compare. Like, they're not. They're <laughs> you can un- compare Dark Souls 3 to Bloodborne. I, I feel like for the past few years, yours has been like a Souls game, but you've not even finished Dark Souls 3. You don't know that. But I you know that. <laughs> you don't. Oh my god, that's crazy. What happened? <laughs> you know? By the way, I've played. I've been playing some Dark Souls 3 as well. I saw yeah. that. You fall a lot. Yeah, dude, I fell <laughs> off the fucking ladder like four times. Yeah, oh my like, god! I know Crispy. I, I know. I know all of you. What is mine? What is mine? Go ahead. Yeah, name oh, mine, Brad. Just, just say name it. it. I want to hear a Brad's guess right now as to what each of our our tentative game of the year gear, game of the year is. Overwatch. No. Name it. <laughs> name it. <laughs> no, it's not Overwatch. <laughs> You Although are. they did just release Sombra, and she's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> the new game modes in Overwatch are pretty what nice. Was, Come on, what was Nick's number one at when we did our top five best of the year so far? I don't remember. Was it? <laughs> that's che- First of all, that's Friday cheating. Friday. It wasn't The Witness. That came out this year? Yes. Holy shit. Oh, January. Came out in January. <sighs> Brad, you're not going to be able to guess mine. What's Nolan's? What's Nolan's pr- tentative game of the year? <laughs> That's fucking funny. Persona 3. No. That didn't even come out this year. Nolan's? Yes. Stardew Valley. No. What, what was your number one at the best of the year so far? You weren't on that episode. I wasn't on that episode. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Next question. Salt and Sanctuary. <laughs> I forgot that came out this year, too. I'm looking at this, my this was a good fucking year. There was a lot of good games to come out this year. But only ain't even done. Years. It ain't even done yet. Yeah. I was looking at my list and I think I've actually I I ended up playing more games that came out in a different year this year than <laughs> no, yeah, I've done a lot of that too. All right, moving on. Next question from Nicholas. Enter the gunge. <laughs> uh hey guys, I'll keep my comment short this week. And that's all he says. No I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's uh, that's what game or game series has the best soundtrack in your opinion? And do you have any recommendations for games where the soundtrack plays a big role in the atmosphere of the settings? I will say... Don't you dare. What? Please don't say Persona. No, I'm not. Okay. Dust Force. Dust Mm. Force is an amazing fucking soundtrack. I've only played an hour of Dust Force. But I've listened to its soundtrack, probably conservative estimate, for 20 or 30 hours. I I fucking love that Can I play Devil's Advocate here? Okay. Not Devil's Advocate. Um... So the way he phrases it, the way he phrases his question mm-hmm. is there any Boner is there Man. any series that had cons- I heard it as is okay. there any series that consistently has I ignored that part I know because I don't care that's why I'm saying because we've answered questions about yeah, good we, soundtracks no, we definitely a lot have. We definitely Final have. Fantasy but has what series has the most consistently quality soundtrack Final oh, Fantasy Persona <laughs> <laughs> well there you go um, I don't remember Persona one and two's music all that much. I remember three and fours, and I listened to fives today. It's pretty fucking good. Uh, Final Fantasy is an obvious choice. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, can't go wrong with I that. I think I think Legend Silent Hills. Zelda. I think Silent Hills still ha- to this day has one of the best consistently good soundtracks. Even the even the crappy games in that series have fantastic soundtracks. Um, Donkey Kong. Donkey Dude, Kong. Any Nintendo. Yeah, like, all of Donkey. Like 
Yeah, I, I remember the day I got my Smashing Live CD, which is the orchestrated version of like the Super Smash Brothers like soundtrack, and I fucking listened to that Sorry, a man. lot. The the Chrono games. Oh my the, god! Yeah, the, both Chrono Cross and the Chrono Xeno Trigger. games. Yep. Um, if you want to lump those together, but that's the same composer. Mm -hmm. But as the, well, yeah, the um, yeah. Whatever. All right, let's not what just even talking. Yeah, let's move on. Next question. Next question. Near from the Michael. One I want to say oh, yeah. that, that elevated yeah, that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. It's I need not to serious yet. That. I need to finish that. Hmm? Uh, next question from Michael. Favorite movie of the year so far? Oh fuck! <sighs> that's a tough one. I can't even remember what all came out this year. Uh, oh man, Jason Bourne. Uh, Jason <laughs> Bourne. I mean, I feel like that's gonna be my answer by default. Uh, without putting too much thought into it, I love Deadpool. Deadpool oh, was yeah, good. I, was was I watched that on TV the other day. It was on HBO, and I Deadpool just had it was on. good. I haven't seen Arrival yet, Neither and I've heard I, really, yeah. really good things about Arrival. Handmaiden was really good. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet either. Um, I really like The Witch. I mean, I'm I'm gonna say good. Civil War was pretty fucking good. Civil War was yeah, good. Civil War. I good. loved Civil War. Civil War was good. There's a lot of good movies that came out this yeah. year. Holy shit. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go God ahead. I know the it's top ten movies of the year. I know it's a cop out, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Jason Bourne. But it's like but it's like games with me. There's so many 2016 did, movies I haven't seen yet. Did Nice Guys come out this year? Yes, yeah. that was a great movie. That was really I do good. like it, but that was a really good. Movie. Favorite? I don't know. Uh, I might say mine's Boo, a Medea Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> What? Okay. What? You don't know Boo and Medea Halloween? No, I don't. There, there's Civil the, War there, was good, though. There's so many movies that I still want to see. You know, the uh, the movie from the director of uh, What We Do in the Shadows, that movie was oh, just... Oh, uh, the, the, the Hunt of the Wilder People? people or? It was just at the, the Regal, the Arbor 8, and it just left. With, with Sam Neill? Hunt I don't think that's Sam Neill. Oh, it? it's Spectral yeah, Shot. Sam Neill. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uncle Sam Neill. Have you seen it yet? No, but I'm, I plan to. Also, Moonlight... I want to really want to see, and I mean, there's there's a lot of shit. My favorite, I think maybe the lobster that came out this year. Yeah, you did, but I haven't seen it. The, the what? The, the lobster. lobster. I really Colin like the Farrell. Lobster. That what dark the fuck? comedy. I haven't seen what? What is this? It's it's the one about the. It's like in the future where everyone they have until a certain age to pair up, and if if you don't find a significant other, then they send you to the farm. They turn you into an animal. <laughs> What? It's so weird. Dude, but I want to watch that. It's the, awesome. the lobster? So, so, yeah. so, like, these people have to go to this hotel and they have to stay there until they either hook up or don't. Hook up or, like, get turned into animals. Dude, that's kind of cool. I want to watch that. All right. Well, we, let's not spend too much time on this question. Uh, moving on. Mr. Green Toast. Since Amazon screwed up my pre order of Watch Dogs 2 by de delaying several days, even though I had it pre ordered two months ago, I figured I'd like to ask uh, if you ever had a pre order gone wrong in the same way, shape, or form. So if you ever pre ordered a game and something happened and you weren't able to get it. I mean, like, the worst that's happened to me pre order wise is it, Amazon didn't deliver it on the day of release and instead I got it the day after release. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't really call that the biggest deal. I don't um, pre order games that often, so I'd have to think back to back when I did. The thing is, it's been so long since I pre-ordered a game with anything other than Amazon, mm -hmm. too. So I don't, I can't think of any other instances. Amazon's pretty on top of that shit. Usually, yeah. And because of the fact that they actually give like a hefty discount on, on games. Well, now they do. Now they, they do. Always. They for yeah. a while they did something similar, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, I haven't had it. I haven't had any issues. Cool. Yeah, uh, I wait. Well, hurry up. Well, Brad doesn't. Brad doesn't well, pre-order anything. I once pre-ordered. Yeah, I don't fuck. I don't pre-order shit. Yeah, exactly. Fuck you. Next question. We got <laughs> GameStop. We, we got more questions. We got more questions. Else. Hurry up, uh, Justin. Um, uh, can you guys think of an instance where a game comes out and you think it's terrible, only to pick it back up a few years later and go, "Oh, this wasn't nearly as bad as I thought." Recently, I've started playing through Final Fantasy Thirteen, and I'm having that happen to me. I dropped it a few years. Uh, uh, I dropped it for a few hour. I I dropped it a few hours in at release and now I regret that decision. I did that earlier this year when I played Banjo Kazooie. I really didn't like that game the first time I played it back what? in the Dizze, mm -hmm. but uh you know I gave it a second chance this year and that game's a delight. Have I told y'all that I finished three Final Fantasy 13 games in a row? No. I did way. that after like having put down the first Final Fantasy Dude, 13. Dude, you had like so year, I tried to help years. you so much when you're having so much trouble with Final Fantasy yeah. 13. And I was and, just like, fuck this. Yeah, I remember. Fuck it. You got angry. And I put it down for like a year, or two years, yeah. and then suddenly I just decided it was yeah. time. 
Mine uh, would be Fallout Three is also one for me. Oh, wow. I put that down for like two years before yeah. I went back to it and finished it and loved it. That's a tough I mean, question for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Castlevania. About that one time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I destroyed the last. No, show Castlevania. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, which one? Lords of Shadow. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Crispy. It was Lords of I couldn't. Have, don't pretend like you wouldn't have taken the same opportunity that I did. Oh, you're right. I'm not angry. Boop. I'm just defeated. <laughs> Symphony of the Night. Oh. Tried playing it. Hated it. Went back a few years later. Loved it. There you go. It happens. Yeah, it, it happens definitely does. It does. It does occasionally happen. We're all works in progress. I can't think of one off the top of my head. I know there's definitely been games. I think the, the Soul series was definitely one where I struggled with it when it first came out. Yeah, I guess Souls would have to be a big one for me, too. Yeah. Um, Bayonetta? When that first came out, I played it for like an hour, and then I wasn't feeling it for some reason, mm -hmm. and I put it down, and it wasn't until... Two came out. Morrowind for me. Morrowind. Maybe a first Elder Scrolls game for a lot of people was probably. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, no, uh, Oblivion for was my first Elder Scrolls. And yeah, like I hated that when I first started it. Oh, yeah. I, I never finished Oblivion. I couldn't spend more than like two hours of Oblivion without, was like, without yeah. wanting to put All it right. down. Uh, moving on. Uh, two more questions. Let's get through them real quick. Okay. Uh, first, uh, next one. Uh, Nick the Batman. What is your favorite shirt that you own? My favorite shirt Ooh. that I own. Oh, man. That's a toughie. I do uh, have that Wind Waker shirt. I have a Wind Waker shirt, and I really like that one. I, I've actually been really fond of that Last Guardian shirt I got at E3 this year. That's pretty good. It's nice. No, uh, you like your fucking Resident Evil shirt. That is a good shirt. It is. I've been, like, I, I feel like you have to cop that answer, because I literally you, you, got those a couple months ago. You know a shirt that I hate, that I love, that I hate? What? Because I can't wear it. As you, uh, Nick got me a Crypto the Necrodancer shirt, but it's like a bunch of green on it, so I can't wear it on the podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure I can't you can. wear it when I stream. Just do it. That'll be hilarious. <laughs> all right. I mean, really, all it's going to do is just decolorize it, right? Yeah. yeah cool. It's not going to make you transparent, right? That's not how that works. It would make the green parts like transparent. Yeah. All right, we'll see. Who, yeah. Who cares? Right. Um, oh, man. Uh, I had another, Crispy, Brad, y'all. I had another shirts. answer for this, and I'm forgetting what it was. Oh. For Brad, it's his jerk off shirt. What? What's a jerk off shirt? It's a shirt oh, you a only question, wear when you're Brad. jerking off. <laughs> Everyone's got one, Brad. Don't you got one? Um, <laughs> my favorite. Shirt. I don't own a Jason Bourne shirt because, believe it or not, I don't think those really exist. Christmas I'm not present. really too fond of any of my shirts, so I don't think I have a favorite. <laughs> what a dick. Well, I, mean, I feel like. I'm a big dude, and I don't... My favorite shirt is his FTL shirt. <laughs> That's my yeah, favorite shirt. I really like that shirt, too. It also happens to be one of the most comfortable t-shirts. Which I can't wear, because... I have a, a t-shirt that is from uh, from 8-Bit Theater from back in the day, mm -hmm. if you remember that. Um, when I was a kid, I went to MegaCon in Orlando, and, and they were there selling shirts, and like I bought one... And then the dude, I was talking to the guy who was wearing the camera. He was like, oh, that's really fucking cool. And he just, like, handed me another T-shirt. was like, here, I don't care. Just take it. <laughs> and it was the, it's the, it's the one that's got the Ape at Theater logo on the front. And on the back, it's got Fighter with, like, the sword chucks. Like, the two swords chained together. Mm -hmm. And I I really like that shirt. And it's kind of, like, my, my go-to, like, good luck piece of clothing now. Yeah. Like, whenever I'm, like... If I go to a job interview, I'll put that on under, like, my fancy clothes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like... I have that one shirt. It's a Wind Waker shirt. Yeah. It's the, uh, what's the famous Japanese um, painting with the wave? Oh, so. Uh, the wave. Yeah, is it that called the wave? the wave? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a wave of something. Yeah. It's that, it's that painting, but it's, there's the, uh, Wind Waker, the, the, the boat. The, the red, boat, what's the, the lion? Red lion. Yeah. How come you never fucking wear that? Because lion I got it, and the first week that I had it, I washed it, and all the color faded. Oh. And I mean, I, it's still there, but I, I must have, Washed it wrong, <laughs> which like fucking sucks. Cheap shirt. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, I think I probably just put it in with hot water or something on accident and fucked it up. Okay. Final question for this week. Uh -huh. Final question. 
from SMG Sterling. Okay. I present you all with a moral dilemma. Oh, God. One of these. A button sits in the middle of the room. Push it. I press it. If you press it. <laughs> I press it. I don't even care. I press anytime it. Anytime you play a video game from then on, you may pause time. Yeah. However, press when you do this, you cause the person sitting to the right of you to lose the same amount of time you paused it for instantly accelerating their lifespan. There's no one sitting next to me. I press. You were essentially Cheat. trading the time to give yourself more time. So you're basically time. killing them faster so you can if play you games. Pause, Either, if you pause for 12 hours, they lose 12 hours from their lifespan. I get it. If they die, you can still pause time, but now without any negative effects. Yeah. Do you hmm. press the button? Yes, because there's one of three possibilities. Either A, there's nobody to my right, and then nobody gets affected. B, he's talking about Chris Davis in the other room, and I don't give a fuck. Or C, he's talking about Nick, and I still don't give a fuck. I think it's whoever's at your right at the time. When I press the button. When you play a game. I play games alone. But I, yeah, I sit in my room alone. I don't know. So yes, I absolutely press the button. I think he's trying to get us, the Mm -hmm. four of us, to trade our lifespans for each other's playtime. I don't give a fuck. I would totally do it. I would press it and hold it until the next person would definitely have to be dead. Does no one know that I'm doing this to him? <laughs> That's my question. Fuck you. Like, like, does he know that I have this magical button that's causing him to lose his life? Because if he doesn't know, I mean, I mean, like, what if he dies in an accident? Like, what if he walks outside, gets hit by a car, and then he dies? An accident. You know, like, how does the flow of time even like apply to that you know because i have not even pressed the button yet yet he's to the right of me this is crazy <laughs> i press it <laughs> it's crazy so i press it but i'll do very short bursts of games i mean you're talking about like godlike powers yeah you i would just make sure i'm sitting to the right of someone i don't care for you can't say well i think the context of this was he was trying to pit us against each he other. said he's not Green room? I'm trying Wait, to no, pick you against is. each other. Fuck you then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's talking so we're talking in a circular manner, so like every time I played a game I was shortening Nick's life. I mean Nick, you'll be fine. I don't play that many video games. I know. I'm I'm in the clear. <laughs> I'm in the clear. <laughs> If, it, if we were talking D and D, I'd be fucked. I don't oh. know. Like if, if I get onto a roguelike stretch, yeah. you'd be fucked. I've been playing a lot of rogue legacy lately. If, if Chris Davis was the one, have you played we'd through all that be before? Hmm? Have you played through that before? What? Rogue yes. Legacy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's the final question for this. All evening. right. Oh, you mean like have I finished it before? Thank you to all of our patrons who ask questions. Any patron, every okay. week we post a uh, thread on the Patreon page, and you can answer, ask us any question you want, anything at all. Like you've just heard these very. Diverse, different questions. Diverse yeah. sets of questions. Patreon.com slash four player if you're interested in supporting us and asking us questions. All right. It is time to wrap the show with a four player minute. Brad's going to start us off. Hype, sweat, thank you, fuck you. Go. Nah. Hype, Interesting. Great, great, good job. My hype is for The Last Guardian. I feel like it's coming. People aren't talking about it. I mean, no at one this be- point, no like, one believes it until it's happening. Yeah, I'm just worried about it. Oh, of course, it's a you know ten year old game. You know, I, I kind of want to come out. I kind of want to see what it is. I kind of want you know a way to, to move on to something new. He's no longer even with Sony. Who the fuck knows? But I'm excited because that. I, I feel like you know I've been kind of on a blackout. There's been some more stuff out there, and oh, I hear I some know, of it's yeah. even a little spoilery. Well, that's nice. Um, but uh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait. My sweat, Final Fantasy 15. You know, I, I play. I didn't talk about it during impressions, but I did play some of that Japanese demo, and they they changed a lot. And and what worries me is that they this game has been in development in some form for such a long time but they've been changing this thing a lot from like demo to demo yeah. which shows a sign of like them not they have being no faith th- in their game <laughs> yeah it, it's worrisome like now now you switch weapons via your d-pad and it's just like different combos for each while before you like created a combo with your different weapons it, it's so weird Still not like amazing, you know. You you it looks so beautiful. You kind of wish it just controlled like Dragon's Dogma, but it doesn't. Mm. Uh, um, but you know, I'm a little worried about it. I do plan on playing it. Hopefully, it's good. My fuck you. I'm gonna give it to EA. 
You know, I feel. Uh, did y'all read the Vince Zampella like uh, <laughs> interview Mm-mm. where they were kind of asking him about like what does he think about like Titanfall and and you know what's going on with EA and their positioning of it and it, or I whatever and he seems kind of frustrated and and they asked him like you know EA like says they're or he says like he says they're committed to the franchise whatever the fuck that means Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like it it, it's really sad because i've also been playing a little bit of titanfall 2's campaign and it's super fun to put it a week after battlefield and a week before call of duty just gave it no chance it's not selling well i don't think dude it's down to like 30 dollars and it's just so sad it's so sad because Already? because you wanted to see like these guys it was not only minutes. a week before call of duty it was a week before an infinity word yeah. call of duty game like fucking poor guys man poor yeah. guys they kind of got put out the pasture yeah and um and my my thank you is Carlos still out there? I think so. My thank you goes to uh, my thank you goes to my lovely wife, Malia Simons, for uh, you know being a great uh, wife and agreeing to marry me. And <laughs> she even took my name, which is like weird, not very modern lady of her, but whatever. You know, I'm supportive of any, any decision she wants to do. I, I definitely didn't urge her to do that, but you know. Bernadette took your name too, didn't she? Today, yeah. Today. Get on that. So technically like technically nothing. Um <laughs> we we totally forgot to sign the marriage certificate on our wedding day. No, we did, but we did it the next morning. We were like, oh. The shit. funny thing is is we got our wedding photos back. Yeah. And you can see in the photos the moment Crispy realized that my ring didn't get blessed. <laughs> <laughs> like you can, see his, you can see his face like I saw like the just photos. <laughs> I saw those photos. I, I, I saw There's those also photos, the photo and there of is him definitely going. Definitely a photo where I'm standing in the background going, <laughs> but like I can't remember why, and I don't know if it was that or if it's just like every time I see a camera, I have this natural instinct to just like <laughs> mean mug it. So I like I'm ruining these photos, but like everyone's all happy, like standing there. There's also the, the moment. Where Crispy's suppressing the f word when oh, he's yeah. saying that the cake is professionally lit. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. Oh, it was a good save though. It's a good save. (laughs) Anyways, all right, Nolan, you're up. Oh hey, that's my turn. It is okay. Oops, sorry, bumped the mic. Oh well. Uh, This week, it's kind of a fucky week for me. I got a lot of fuck yous. First, to uh, LG and AT and T, I had an LG G4 phone. Uh, and apparently, they come over and break your garage door? No, they didn't. <laughs> apparently, there is a known issue with LG uh, uh, G4s and AT&T where the phone will go into a boot loop uh, in which it essentially bricks the phone. Uh, and AT and like, the only thing LG or AT&T has done is replace it. If it's in warranty, my phone was, of course, three months out of warranty. Uh, so it's essentially become a paperweight. Uh, so fuck you. Uh, my, okay... That works too. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Did uh, that just happen? Yeah, I guess I need some like glue. <laughs> oh my glue. god, the yeah. entire book just came out of the book. Yep. Uh, right. My uh, uh, branching off of that, my next fuck you is going to go to Amazon, uh, the bank they use for their Amazon card, uh, Synchrony Bank. Uh, I got an Amazon card a while ago. Uh, to buy a big purchase uh, so I could do like a, you know, finance or whatever. And I was like, you know what? You know, my phone's fucked. Uh, you know, AT&T no longer does uh, subsidized phones or you just put a big chunk down and get a contract. They now just, essentially you pay for the whole price of the phone, like $600, $700. I'm like, you know what? I can just buy it on Amazon and do like a monthly installment plan via them and pay less money. Uh, my Amazon card was closed 20 days ago due to inactivity. I cannot reopen it. I have to reapply for a new card. So, fuck you people. Mm. Fuck you people. Uh, next fuck you this week goes to uh, Sony and the DualShock 4, which it just seems like the battery life just gets shittier. You know, every anything that has a battery, as it ages, the battery life gets worse. But I just have had such a bad experience with my DualShock 4. What? How come y'all didn't talk about y'all's pros? Did y'all mess around with those at all? I mean, it's been hooked up since last week. I, I've watched Netflix on it. 
I've put, I've played all of Dishonored on it. See, that's the thing is that the next game I'm playing on is Final Fantasy uh, 15. So I, I I haven't had a whole lot to talk about um, in regards to it. Mm. Um, Dishonored Two is apparently PlayStation Four Pro enhanced. Well, there you go. I don't know what that. Entails. There has been some stories that some of the old, older games that have been patched are actually running not as good. Hmm. So that's a little worrisome. But, you know, maybe th- those are old games that got patched. So anyway, I, I was playing <clears throat> Persona 4 Golden on my PS TV, and I was originally using a, uh, a DualShock 3, uh, and that ran out of battery. And so I was like, oh, I'll use my DualShock 4. And the battery fucking just, like, didn't last anywhere near as long as my mm. DualShock 3, which is, like, over twice as old as my DualShock 4. Like, that is ridiculous. I, I am just infuriated with how bad their controller is. Once once again, I'll make the comparison to the uh, Wii U Pro controller, which lasts, like, 70 or 80 hours. Yeah. Like, that's you can play an entire game on one charge of... You can play multiple games. Like, that's just insane to me. So, I mean, yeah. fuck you, Sony. Uh, and then my final fuck you of the week uh, goes to... I don't know who to give it to. Arcane, Bethesda, whoever. the maker of that... That little oh yeah, uh, Arcane Bethesda, whoever. Uh, in regards to uh, Dishonored Two, uh, the I've been playing on the PC. I haven't had like a horrible time, but I've been having some issues. Like first off, I can't super sample, so I can't I can't put the game in like fourteen forty and play it on a ten eighty p monitor. It just doesn't work. Uh, I can't. The I've been having controller issues. Like uh, I was playing it with a you know an official Microsoft controller. It's not like it was some third party thing. Uh, and when I'd go to interact with something, like half the time, like the button input just doesn't accept. Like it just doesn't go through. I don't know what it yeah. is. Uh, and it's just come on. Like why do we have such shitty PC ports? Or like I don't. know. It's like frustrating. Yeah, I mean, that's been universal with that game for some reason. And I don't know. They just put out apparently today a six, a too. six gig patch. So hopefully that maybe will address some issues. I don't know if it'll fix it. I might have to move back to mouse and keyboard. I originally started with mouse and keyboard, but I wasn't feeling it. Uh, I usually play first-person games with mouse and keyboard, but this one, just the, the way the action worked, I felt like a controller was yeah, much more. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. It, mouse does help with, like, picking up all the little shit I in the environment. Does, yeah. All right, well, anyway, those were my fuck yous for the week. Little coins. Lots of Frisbee. them. Frisbee. Oh, can I can I add on to one more thing please, before I in, please, interrupt please Crusty real quick? Please. The other fuck you was because my my LG broke, or so it's essentially a brick, and so I was like, oh yeah, I have my old Samsung. I was like, why did I even stop using this? Oh yeah, because this phone apparently has another known issue where sometimes just if you do something weird on it for then on until you re- do a factory reset, you can't hear people on phone calls. Is it <laughs> what? Yep. When you, if I were to call you right now from this phone, I wouldn't hear you and you wouldn't hear me. It has something to do with like Bluetooth devices and it trying to like connect via a Bluetooth device that isn't there. Sounds like your phone isn't really a phone. Yeah. That's fucked, man. Crispy? Yeah. All right. I'm going to start my four player minute with a thank you. And that thank you this week goes to Wendigo Ate My Baby. Because he gifted me Beyond Good and Evil last night. Yeah, nice. Saved playing. you. From Saved me ten dollars. So. Is, is, is it nice that he frequents your streams? Because he never stays around long for mine. Well, the funny thing is, he gave me the game. <laughs> I started playing it, and about five minutes into it, he was like, "All right, oh, I gotta okay. go to bed." Yeah. <laughs> and like left, and I'm like, what "He goes the to fuck bed at like eight, o- eight o'clock at night." What are you doing? <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you again for that, Wendingo. Thank you. Um, my hype this week is for the new Overwatch character Sombra, who just dropped, and apparently she's really cool. But I haven't for had Christmas much time game of the year. Around. It, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what if it is? What if it is? That's perfectly fine. <laughs> and then uh, let's There's see. There's nothing wrong with liking a game. Well, you know, you know, it's just unless it's No Man's it Sky. It is, it is, yeah. <laughs> then, then yeah. you're a criminal. <laughs> uh, my, exactly. My. My, oh, I had a fuck you and I forgot it. I just, I just let the hate leave me. That's good. It was something. It was a thing. I don't remember. Oh, how about, how about, how about insurance? Fuck you guys. <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> Who said you can make the cutscenes in Mirror's Edge? Nobody. No, I actually did have a problem with insurance, kind of oh. similar to like what you were talking about with Amazon where they canceled my account. Or they canceled my policy. I called them up, and their their underwriting department was like, "Oh yeah, well we we think there might be people who are using your car, and we don't know if they're insured." And the people they were talking about were my parents. And I said, 
Well, no, they don't use my car because they live in a different state. <laughs> and they do have insurance because it's through you. <laughs> and they said, oh, okay, well, we'll clear them. But they had already cut off my policy. So they How made they... me get a new quote to reinstate my auto insurance. And higher. the new quote, the difference between the old quote and the new quote was more than the old quote together, like Jesus all together. Christ. It's like I was originally paying like $75 and then they added $90 to it. What that. the fuck? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Fucking infuriating. It's the only How thing I've been mad about. How they know driving like... your car, first of all? Huh? How do they know someone I don't else? know. They had like, they, they actually read like four names. Two of them were my parents. One of them was a person I've never heard of. I don't even know if they exist. And then one of them was like an old roommate from like three years ago who I haven't talked to since the day he moved out. Like, it, yeah, just fucking do, weird. Do, I don't know. Do, I don't know. Do, do, uh, and then uh, <laughs> my sweat is for Watch Dogs. I kind of want to play Watch Dogs, but I don't know if I want to, like, buy it. I, like, I'm so, like, I feel like I can maybe buy one more game this year, and I don't you, know what it should I would should let be. you borrow mine if you, if you can promise me that as soon as I'm ready to play it, you can give it back to me. Are you not? You're not well, going to start it? Not until I finish Dishonored 2. Oh. Well, well, I mean, but I'm going to try and finish this Dishonored 2 this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I told... Do you have it on you? No. Oh, well then... You'd have to come get it. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Which you're more than welcome to. Tonight? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I would. <laughs> really? i uh, drive up to your house and get it? Sure, if you want. That's a long drive. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, might, well, I, I, can't, I don't have anything else to do. All right. Why don't you just watch Mr. Robot? Is that Redbox? No. No. <laughs> this is the third time in the show <laughs> we've mentioned. This is the third time that Watch Dogs 2 is not up. available in Redbox. Okay, that's my minute. All right, and I'm going to start mine off with my hype, which is um, for Final Fantasy 15. That comes out very soon, mm -hmm. and it's... You know, I have a history with Final Fantasy. I love, I love Final Fantasy. The hype's finally starting to set in a little bit. I even, I decided I was gonna take a day off work to just fucking dig, just dig in deep and make some progress in that game right up front. So I'm looking forward to. You it. know what I could say, and in, in bumping off of that is a fuck you to Ubisoft because they delayed, or I don't know if they delayed, but Watch Dogs 2 PC comes For out the same weeks. day as Final Fantasy 15. Oof. Ooh. Yeah. Oof. That. Was silly. Sucks. Yeah. Oof. Uh, my sweat goes to Resident Evil 7 predominantly because I really, really, really at this point want to play it in VR. And I'm really, really worried that the VR is not going to be up to the task. Um, I really hope it is because I think that could be incredible. Well, definitely. Um, and uh, my fuck you of the week goes to Pokemon Sun and Moon for making me want to well, play it. I feel it. like you... You're like this with Call of Duty. You say this shit every year. Like, I think I might actually play the new Call of Duty campaign or the new Pokemon. But there's a difference because sometimes I actually don't do that. Like, this year I'm not playing when the When was the last time he played a Pokemon game? But he always says he's going to, like, he's, he's considering it, right? Not that always. I mean, he's not considering Maybe he's considering it. What about you, it? Crispy? You're usually a Pokemon master, Vader. I'm pretty sure I've played more I'm Pokemon thinking about than playing Pokemon games. Sun and Moon. It's good. No, Sun and Moon not, doesn't get reviews. But I'm, every, not, I'm not excited about Sun Every Pokemon, Pokemon game gets good reviews, though, right? I think. Sometimes I just want to catch me some Pokemons, all right? Some Pokemons. Um, um, and uh, let's see. I don't really. Charter 4. My thank you of the week. I don't really have a thank you. Wow. I'm going to say another fuck you. My fuck you goes, man, 2016 sucked. Right? Dude, doesn't it? Okay, you say that, and like I just opened a thread that's like the 2016 timeline, all the horrible things that have happened. Yeah. David Bowie died on January 10th. Yep. Doesn't it feel like that, like... I thought that happened like a few Just months. happened? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it's it's ever since that moment, it's been just all downhill. Just, and then Alan mm -hmm. Rickman was four days later. People mm -hmm. dying, people getting elected. Prince. People getting elected Prince. president. And then like, and Gene and Wilder. Trump. Harambe. And then all the, the fucking Michigan. And then like, on top the of all that. Water crisis. On top of all that, I feel like there's been a lot of great games. Or, sorry, there's been some great no games. No Man's Sky. There's been some great games, but I don't feel like there's been... Enough great games. No, you're forgetting stuff, man. No. I'm telling you, it has been a great. There's been a lot of good year. games this year. Did you I, play Inside? I did. That's Dude, cool. that game was good. Do you? I, 
Let me tell you this. Yeah. I, I pulled up my list of all the games I've played this year. Yeah. I put... Well, I mean, no one's saying that you're playing all the right games, but there's been some good games this year. The, maybe the Did you may, play Darkest Dungeon? It had maybe it X hasn't been a great year. It, maybe it has not been a great X year for me. It has not been there's sure, not been enough sure, tempting sure. me, like speaking sure. directly to me. I mean, but you, I you looked play at all, Mirror's Edge. I looked at all the games that I played this year and I put them all together. I needed to make a top ten list and I had twelve wow. <laughs> to pick from. Did you play that Ratchet and Clank game? Yeah. I, I twelve games that I would say I would consider Doom? for you top ten Doom, list. Right? I did. You finished all those games? Yeah. You haven't Sweet. finished Salt and Sanctuary. You haven't played have Hitman not. yet. I have not. So I, I'm, I'm not going to play that until it's did fucking you, Did you play them done. all? I haven't played the most recent one. Okay. The point is, I just feel like it's been kind of an underwhelming year for me. And I'm telling you right now, if Final Fantasy 15 and The Last Guardian don't deliver, 2016 is going to go down for not my favorite year, gaming-wise. Not to say there's not some great stuff out there, and there's not plenty of stuff to talk about and highlight. I'm really looking forward to doing a top 10 at the end of the year, but... Usually it's a lot. I have a lot more to choose from. This year. and this year has just been kind of. Did you play Ashton Two? No. Dark Souls Three. Yes. You can just name games. I yeah, have a list of about. I have a list of about Tony eight or nine Island. games. I have a list of about eight or nine games that were not part of that twelve that I want to play a significant chunk of before the end of the year, and I'm working my way through it. So, there's that. Um, anyways, I think I. I mean, the 2016 just kind of sucked. Fuck 2016, just in mm. general, not necessarily video game related, but. 2016 just kind of fucking sucked. Oh, well. yep. So fuck you to 2016. Thank you for listening to the show. That's our, that's our show this week. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do next week for sure. We'll make sure we let everybody know because next week is Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. We'll do something next week, whether Definitely. it's a podcast or a board game night or something, but we will do something. Circle jerk. Um, and, uh, of course, fourplayernetwork.com is a website. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash fourplayer. And if you have not yet, please join our free community discord server it's discord.gg slash four players so check it out we would love to have you in there um and i think that's our show so thanks for listening and we'll see y'all later bye guys